I was like, where the hell Adam at, bro? Tell that we got a flight. Oh, shit. How much time's your flight at? Six. Six? It's 12 17. Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, that's. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I, <laughs> we might change that in the morning. <laughs> I don't know. You got we like four or five hours in you right now? Four or five hours for what? You want to do like a four hour podcast? Yeah, I'm not Joe Rogan. No, yeah, I don't. What do you mean? I was just, I'm, I'm <laughs> saying, like, if you're worried about missing your flight, it's, it, it would have to be a very, very long podcast. Nah, bro. Think about if we finish at three. Yeah. You get to zip right there. Park my car in seventy five dollar a day parking. That's part of it. Let it be there for a month. Come back with a three thousand dollar bill. Do you remember when Rogan went viral because he parked his car at LAX and and then like the bird all over it and he Hilarious. came back to his car after a week and there was just like sculptures of all over his car. I don't remember that. That was a few years back. Yeah, you're a new school Rogan guy, huh? Uh, <laughs> past four years. <laughs> four years. Yeah. Let me think. I got twelve years watching the Joe Rogan pod. That's it had to be a long time ago because Joe fly private now. Yeah, he probably probably should. That was back in the day. I mean, quarter of a billion from Spotify. You'd fly private too? With him. <laughs> <laughs> With him. It's hard for me to imagine getting into the fly private state of mind. Though, we're doing a private jet. Me and my team, uh, we're doing a show in Houston. Uh huh. And from Houston to Austin is like seven grand. For a private jet? Houston to Austin. Ten people. V versus so, like what, like a three hour drive? Yeah. But it's just for the Instagram, the flicks. Yeah. A lot of people just like get onto it and they don't even get up in the air and they just take That's photos dumb. on there. You don't support that? No. Nah. We well, got fake it till you make it. Why fake it? Just be regular. Okay. In the rap world, we fake it till we make it. Not really, because rappers used to look broke. Like look at old little baby videos. It, what, wh how old? Maybe seven years. But old, Lil Baby was like a real trapper. Like He was a real drug dealer. I like to see the come up. Yeah. Yeah. But you're not supposed to show that you were like really that dirty. Like if, if I sign a rapper, like my first order of business is I have to get them fresh. I have to get them looking presentable enough that you can't tell that they're broke. Go look at Young Thug. Uh, what was this video called? Bro, we got to go back to like 2011 to see Young Thug looking dusty in videos. Uh, young Thug, um, what was that group he was with? Um, the Black, uh, what was it called? Black Rich Kids. Something. Oh, okay. We're going to go back to that. But was he was $100 autograph. Look at that. Don't you like to see the come up? I do, but I feel like this, like him wearing like a, a G-Shock and like a random thermal under his T-shirt, that that was like cool at the time. Yeah, but where's the iced out? People still had ice back then. Nah, but the standard for being icy was so much lower in 2011, yeah. don't you think? Yeah, you're right. Cause I, I can't got, believe you. I got a few chains I don't wear. I thought you like wouldn't even like know who Young Thug and Lil Baby were. Why? Because you seem like the anti-black person, black comedian. Why do I seem anti-black? It's kind of like your whole brand is like, I'm going to piss off all these black people and get lit off it. <laughs> Where you see that at? <laughs> like every clip. No. <laughs> On my special, I got a joke about being a white woman. A w being a white woman? Beating. Beating. No, no, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. I think the domestic violence thing. I didn't thing know I was anti-black. No, okay, not anti-black, but like you seem like more ready to piss off black people than almost any comedian that I've ever witnessed. I'm ready to piss off people who are emotional. Mm -hmm. So if you're emotional, you're going to get pissed off. A lot of black people appreciated George Floyd's joke. Mm. Did they, though? Because from my vantage point on Twitter, oh, my God, I've, I've seen very few people get that level of rage from the black community since... Derek Chauvin and the actual George Floyd controversy. Well, I'm a comedian. What about the gangster rappers? Right. I ain't never killed nobody. I don't sell drugs. But you're both kind of playing characters, right? They're like playing an exaggerated version of like a criminal. And they're way more disrespectful. Mm. <laughs> You've heard rappers say we smoking on whatever pack when somebody dies. Right. Do you support that? Because <sighs> um, Ari Shafir did basically the same thing when Kobe died. Yeah. Didn't go over so it's well. It's an act. It's an act. <laughs> You're right. Some of them really are about that life, but I get it. Right. Make your coins. I'm not going to chastise them. I know a lot of rappers who will diss dead people, and it's almost like, it's not even like they want to do it. They feel like they have to do it because the standard has been set so high in terms of other people dissing their dead friends that they can't really 
<clears throat> get away with not doing it. That's a dangerous game. Very. I feel like when you talk about killing and death, then you got to watch your back. Right. If I was a rapper, I'd be like Chance the Rapper. Mm, Chance the Rapper is pretty much like the polar opposite of the character that you present as a comedian, though. <laughs> How? Does he have a white baby mama? No, I think he has a black baby mama, but like, or a wife. But I mean, I just feel like he's going like very out of his way to not offend people or be controversial in any way. What about Logic? Logic? That's my dog. Sort of similar. You know him? Yeah. You listen to him? Yeah. I'm in his movie coming up. Really? Is yeah. a movie coming out? Yeah. Well, you don't know about it, but it's coming. No, I mean, yeah. does the world know about it? I don't even know if I'm supposed to talk about that. Edit it out. No, no, it's fine. Oh, sorry, yeah, edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, yeah, edit that out. No, that's good, though. You could you could be kind of like part of the, the rollout cycle. Yeah. I feel like I'm one of the many media personalities that Logic doesn't care for. Can you give for. me three examples of where I was anti-black? Oh, uh, okay. I don't actually think that. I just think that that's kind of <laughs> like you've, you've shown like a willingness to embrace that in a way that a lot of comedians don't. Comedians troll. Mm. I troll. I have a very thought out, very well-written George Floyd joke that didn't go viral. And I hate that it didn't. Because what the world saw was me being a troll trying to shut a heckler up that had been heckling for 45 minutes. Oh, it was going on for that long, huh? See, that's the thing. That's what happens in the social media area uh, era. You see 30 seconds and you formed your opinion about me. Right. Now you can go take other jokes where I made about slavery and corrupt your view of me and say I'm anti-black. Right. Well, even when I watch your special, though, it's like you kind of like sandwich a lot like you front load the really offensive jokes in the beginning is that intentional to kind of like lay into the domestic violence stuff and the racist stuff in the very beginning to sort of set the stage what about the trans stuff that was in the end okay but that's kind of like that's your finale right bring it back to something else that people consider i don't know very I, just, offensive. I just do me i just do what feels good mm. regardless of who it offends there's no methodology to that though because it's like as a comedian especially in this day and age I mean, it is kind of hard to get a laugh when you're just like telling a funny little story about heading down to the post office and some, <laughs> some bullshit versus like, you know, when you have somebody like Dave Chappelle who like rules the media cycle for a week every time he drops something because of the fact that he's offensive enough that it gets people who normally wouldn't really want anything to do with him. They have to talk about him and that sort of propels him. Cute jokes still sell. Mm. Quicker. Might not last as longer, but somebody who's polarizing like me. We can work towards 70 because people have thanked me for being real. Mm -hmm. They're like, you talk for a lot of us who are tired of the bullshit. I'm not saying the George Floyd thing, you know, because I knew a lot of, well, I didn't know I knew a lot of his family, but I knew a lot of his family. And uh, I talked to him and uh, not saying that part, but I'm saying like when I talk about the homosexual agenda, when I talk about a lot of the other agendas that mainstream media puts on us, I talk about that in my show, and a lot of people thank me for actually having a voice and saying it because they can't. They'll lose their job. You might lose sponsorships. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck either, for the record. I you don't, don't think you King, don't. King Palm here doesn't seem like they give a fuck if we uh, say That's anything. That's why I came on your pod. Really? Okay, good. I've had like 30 offers, but I'm selective. Was Willie D yelling at you? I didn't watch it, but the title made it sound like it was a confrontation. Willie D was good, and the day after, he told me that was one of the best podcasts he's ever done. Oh, that's good. We had opposing views, but we respected each other as men. Uh-huh. <laughs> For sure. I uh, Okay, but there's two ways to go about the George Floyd conversation, though. Were you making, like, from your perspective, is this something where you just felt like it had to be something you can make jokes about because it's, like, something that so many other people treat as if you can't joke about it? Or... Have you gone down the Candace Owens rabbit hole of learning about how actually this was I know presented inappropriately to people and Derek Chauvin is a martyr and he, he didn't actually do anything wrong in that situation? I'm not a big conspiracy theorist, but I take truth out of every situation. And he wasn't a saint. Uh, and there was an argument that I had about karma. And uh, I get it. Uh, maybe you can question how the police handle it handled it but i mean there's a lot of questionable things that happen with that and you could take truths out of both sides 
And at the end of the day, he was somebody's dad. Mm. And even though, you know, he had a, a f***ed up reputation and there's things that he did to a pregnant woman that I don't agree about. But it wasn't personal because it was George Floyd. Mm -hmm. It's an event that I can talk about that everybody saw. I've had other police brutality jokes, but they're, they're time pieces, you know, like the dude who got choked for selling cigarettes. I used to have a joke about that. Mm. So, I mean, George Floyd touched more people. I feel like because people had a time to pay attention during the pandemic. Definitely. And it felt like there was just, you know, there was just like a seething rage amongst people. And it, it felt like the George Floyd thing was just kind of like an outlet for it. But I, I mean, a lot of goofy things happened during that time period. Like I Way have too many. I have memories of all of these porn star girls that I know <laughs> who were not woke by any means prior to this or after this. But during the, the 2020 period in which the George Floyd thing happened and there was the racial reckoning and the riots and the protests and whatever, they were posting black squares. They were, they were posting things the on Twitter. Shit. I have ne and I've, I haven't seen it since, and I never saw it before that. And I think we just have to like, acknowledge that that was a very interesting time period. And even like me, I didn't post the black square, and I felt like I was going to get attacked for it. I didn't tweet for weeks around that time period because I was so scared of getting That's thrown the thing, in the mix. bro. I didn't like that. I didn't like how BLM was bullying people into doing shit. And that's a corrupt organization. Mm. And even saying that was super controversial at that time period. I said it. I remember we went to a, on a BMX trip up to San Francisco and there was... BMF? BMX. Like oh. BMX bikes. Yeah, I was also in BMF. Was like the, <laughs> the one white guy. But uh, no, but then there was like one black dude out riding BMX with us one day, and he starts going off about how BLM is a terrorist organization. And I still remember being like, oh, man, hope, hope nobody overhears this <laughs> dude t saying this. I don't even want to be associated with this dude saying that, which feels a little goofy now. I have a question for you. Hit Why me. did black people hate Kyle Rittenhouse? And that, I'm totally with you. I used to get attacked for saying that Kyle, Kyle Rittenhouse was innocent and didn't really do anything If wrong. anything, shouldn't he be black people's hero? He killed, well, he killed two white people and injured one white dude. Right. There were dozens of people where I had to break it, the news to him that he didn't kill any black people. That's what happens <laughs> when you follow that. blindly. <laughs> yeah. They thought Kyle Rittenhouse killed black people. Right. That's Kyle Rittenhouse seems like kind of a schmo well he's just kind We're of a, friends now are you really yeah. you, you tapped in well, what's I your mean, perspective on him do you like him as anything outside of a killer i get <laughs> i get his perspective he was trying to protect his grandparents gas station mm -hmm. and they still are constantly saying that he didn't have the right to cross state lines etc like all this bullshit that just really didn't people doesn't have a right up. to fucking tear up shit right I mean, with the Kyle Rittenhouse thing, though, you really saw, like, the dishonesty of so many people on the left that they weren't willing to acknowledge the reality about that situation. Yeah, true. Very true. That if somebody was chasing you with a weapon and you had a gun on you. He got hit in the head with a skateboard. Right. And then you'd probably... I probably would have been dead because he has a good shot. Right. Falling down, do you shoot? Mm, I shoot a lot. I shoot a lot. And he had an AR, and that... He hit the dude in the bicep. I know. Fire. That's... It is. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, you just lost all your <laughs> viewers. <laughs> <laughs> they they got to come along the ride with me. Yeah. Kyle Rittenhouse, I mean, he's like the right wing King Vaughn, <laughs> if you ask me. Yeah, he killed people that he just met, as opposed to people he had long standing rivalries with. I'm not but, going with there with you. You're not into that. You're a King Vaughn fan. Yeah, I like King Vaughn, but also Quando Rondo's from like my, I'm from Macon, and he's from around the way, mm -hmm. uh, Savannah. Right. And uh, Quan Rondo, he's he's an example though of how like I, I don't know if you give a shit about this, but like in the rap world, people just choose the good guys and the bad guys, and then they decide whoever gets to fit in that box because King Von was like the more liked rapper. So then Quan Rondo he basically tells a great story, but Quan Rondo got like blacklisted, like lost a huge percentage of his opportunities in his career. And the dude, Lil Tim, who actually pulled the trigger, he got like basically mercilessly smeared. And when you really look at the situation, they weren't tried because they didn't really do anything wrong, but they did kill someone who was very beloved. I love Quan Rondo's voice. No homo. Incredible. Can I play a song? 
I mean, not on the podcast. You could play it and then we can edit it out afterwards. Uh, Which one? Is it going to be him banging on the car? Or no, what? hold up. It was a. Uh, it's a good song. Damn, you're, you're hyped though because you can't talk to Joe Rogan about Quando Rondo, huh? Nah, I do. <laughs> I do. He'd be like, "Who the f- is that?" All right, we gotta edit this out. Yeah, he a bad boy. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, all of us in Georgia. Yeah. I used to be a gangbanger. Whoa! All right, let's get into this because I've been—I'm trying to figure out how you go from like you know whoever you were in your prior life to like full-blown Rittenhouse defender slash George Floyd. I'm not a Rittenhouse defender. Just when I got more mature, I said it's time for black people to think on their own. A lot of black people are, are tired of being told how to think, mm. and we can only make it through rap, basketball, football. Right. And did you feel like that was the message that was put out to you as a kid? Yes. I was very good at football. I was pushed to play football. Then I got hurt. What happened? Uh, knee injury, back injury. Ouch. And so that completely just ruined, like you had a vision for what your life was going to be like prior to yeah, that? Yeah, I had promised my whole family a whole bunch of mm. And that happened what? How old were you? 17. I was in a wheelchair for like six months. Really? Yeah, 18. And that made you sort of what? Zero in on the, the funny part of your personality? I was always funny. Okay. I was on MTV Your Mama when I was 16. 16? Mm-hmm. From Georgia, how did you, you get in that position? Went to Atlanta, audition with my mom. Uh huh. And uh, was this like a, a realization, an awakening, when you realized that your your true potential didn't lie in your body but your mind? Well, once I got hurt, I had to disp- uh, figure out other options. I was out there jugging, robbing with my friend. He went to prison. Define jugging. Uh, allegedly, I was buying fake gold. And selling it. I was buying it in Atlanta and selling it in Macon. And by gold, you mean cocaine? No, gold. Oh, gold okay. jewelry. Okay. We were stealing tools out of people's trucks, pawning them. Really? So you were kind of like... A tornado had came through. We were going inside of people's houses. It was bad. I was, I was on a path of destruction. And then when he went to prison, I said, I got to get out of here. And I moved to California. He got picked up for what? Uh, he was selling a cell phone and he robbed a guy. Guy took the gun and put him on the ground. Oh, shit. And I was supposed to be there, but I was with my girlfriend at the time. Wow. And so that changed everything for you? When I saw that that night laying in bed with her, I was just like, I got to figure shit out. When you say you saw it, you mean like? On the news. On the news? Yeah. Holy shit. I was like, yo, baby, I can't do this anymore. And had you even dabbled in the comedy shit before you headed out to L.A.? A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. You're starting to get your your toes wet. I was more of an actor. I was doing a lot of acting stuff. Okay. And then you move out here, and what what does life become? Where'd you move? Horrible. I was in the valley. Mm -hmm. Uh, But you went straight to the valley? You got to skip I was on Sherman Way in Tampa. You you skipped the downtown L.A. part of your life? Because you're supposed to get a one-bedroom apartment in downtown L.A. and get harassed by meth heads at all times of the night. I moved there three years after I lived here. Oh, really? Okay. Do you hate it? Downtown? Yeah. I did until... I loved it until I had a kid. Downtown is what sends people to Austin. <laughs> True. If you spend a year downtown LA, then you deserve Or uh, Austin. Venice Beach. Yeah, either one. Just any crack-oriented yeah. part. Crack-oriented. <laughs> I mean, I lived downtown for two, three years, and for sure. It's what just, part? Uh, like 6th and Spring. I was right there, 5th and Spring. Yeah. Yeah. I had a bike shop on 5th and Los Angeles, and it was I knew your insane. bike shop. Oh, you did? Wow. Yeah. That's sick. So you was right there by the 7-Eleven. Yeah, like a block or two away from that. Yeah, I know exactly. What the SB, you had yeah. SB Grand. Uh, I was at six twenty one South Spring Street, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. It was across the street I think I from five eleven Spring. Yeah, I can't remember. That was, no, five oh one South Spring. That was a good era, though. I was getting a lot of like indiscriminate random vagina at that point. You used in my to life. go to the Down and Out. Yes, bar. but we were next to King Eddie, so that was our local watering hole. Right there. That's I, where a lot of homeless people went. Facts. And I I had a really great game plan going where I would meet girls on Tinder, meet up with them at the bar next door, have a couple of drinks, then bring them next door. Hey, this is my store. Boom. Come on in. Bang them out on the desk. Send them on their way. I never even How many had bitches to come. Thank you. In my life? Probably like 600 or something. Maybe. Shit. I had like 300 before I started doing. You, oh, you, you do porn? Yeah. That's my wife's flashlight. If you'd like to take it in the bathroom later. Oh, shit. That was you and your wife. <laughs> that That's <was>. my homeboy. <laughs> Who? Jason. Jason Love, yeah. really? 
Oh, so there were definitely ops. Uh, no, but I, we're ops. No, I'm just kidding. I, shout out to Jason. But uh, I was just at the awards, and we in didn't Vegas. we didn't run into him. It's kind of awkward. We were, we were like really excited to take a he's, photo. He's huge. Yeah, and he's a freak of nature. He's like six four. I'm six three. But you ain't that swole. <laughs> That I nigga, could be. He could be in the NFL. Stick a needle in my ass, I could be. <laughs> Not saying that he's Why your ass? You kind of gay? No. I've done, you ever done steroids? Do I look like I've done steroids? See, see, you haven't hung out with Rogan enough if he hasn't let you in on how this works. Yeah, you just you use the the fatty butt muscle. And Rogan you, doesn't do roids. Okay, well, whatever you want to call it. TRT. Hormones. Yeah, yeah TRT. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, well, you, you you're not you're not interested in that. Um, I'm still young, maybe in like three four years. Yeah, I mean, I feel like once you get to a certain age, you kind of you got to start running that program. Yeah, I go to his doctors. I'm dropping some weight. Flacco's like, bro, you're getting smaller. I was like, yeah, bro, bro, getting healthier. Flacco, that is every person he meets. He either tells them that they look fatter or shorter or taller than they look on the internet. What like, I'm getting, I'm getting smaller. That is his introductory statement to everyone. It's crazy. Well, his introductory <clears throat> statement was actually, "You're the goat." Yes, I, I 100% knew that he was going to say that. As yeah. soon as I realized that you guys were talking in the hallway, I knew he was going to be flipping out on you because <laughs> he loves anyone who will challenge the sort of mainstream Flacco black thick. You need consensus. to put him in porn. Oh, yeah, he got a thing on him for Don't sure. Don't fucking yeah. hips he got? He always says he has a 10-inch dick. I tell him to pull it out. Yeah, that would be great, but as a boss, I don't know if I would really want to <laughs> insist upon that. That's sexual harassment? Mm, I mean, I don't know because it would be like a willing dick showing, but... <laughs> For sure, I would like to see what he's working with, but I'm not going to ask him to whip it out. Yeah. Is it gay if you ask to see another man's dick? Not for me. As long as you don't suck it, right? If you suck it, it's gay. I personally, though, like have had this problem with a lot of different rappers where they tell me that they want to get into porn, and then I'd say, like, let's see it. They're and, shy. And they're like, that's gay. And I'm like, okay, that is literally the <laughs> whole thing in porn. How do you like porn? That's fine. Actually, is it just a job or is it pussy sometimes? Uh, it's both. It's a job and it's like, oh, hell yeah. I get to touch on a new vagina today. Outside of your wife, who got the best pussy? Hmm. I don't know. This girl, Dan Dangler, sat on my face the other day, so I felt like I got a really good encounter with her vagina. She got a nice one. I'm talking about feeling where you're like, fuck, I got to stop before I bust. There's this girl, Kelly K, and I, I, I nutted like prematurely with her. She's from Nashville, I think. She's a down south girl, so that might be why. I feel like down south they have like way lower body counts on average. Yeah. But she had a kid after I want to say that. Niggas be fucking in the south. Nah, that's a good point. But I feel like they got smaller dicks down south. I don't know. The cities, New York and LA got bigger dicks, right? No, that's, there's no nobody's going to go for this. <laughs> Nah, I say country <laughs> niggas. Yeah, that's kind of like a stereotype that you could just be like a well-hung farmer, right? Yeah. Girls always surprised when they see my thing. Really? Yeah. Because it's fire or it's it's weak? They're like, oh my God, I ain't never had a fat man with a decent dick. Because your dick's really got to be huge to, to stand out thick. amongst the yeah. fat pack. If my dick was on a dude that weighed 140 pounds, oh my God. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like there's almost something that happens when you're fat that makes your dick smaller. I'm gay as hell. <laughs> Dude, the last person to do that was uh, this this midget, D-Lo. How big was his? Big. Really? Yes. I wish I had it on my phone, but he, he gave it to me. Because you know who Baby Alien is? <coughs> no. He's this other dude that he, he banged some chicks with on the fan bus. D-Lo got that thing? D-Lo got a big ass dick, yeah. Like how big? He's like this tall, and he's got a big dick. How big? Like, probably like a good seven inches. Oh, okay. We got to stop. They're going to exit out of this. Yeah. <laughs> hey, take all that out. <laughs> so, this, okay. Right. You move to L.A. And you want to be a writer at this time? Uh, comedian. Oh, so you were fully on board with the comedian. Oh, no, you said actor, though. Yeah, actor, comedian. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you move out to the Valley, and then what starts happening? Nothing. It's just dry as fuck? I don't book nothing for like five years. <laughs> And then uh, I booked a commercial, and then I got on uh, ADD Roast Me. Oh, okay. That's a a launching pad for yeah. a lot of talent at a certain point there. Yeah. All and then a lot, of, a lot of other stuff started happening. From there? 
Yeah, from there. Yeah, all at the same time. How'd you, how did you enjoy that roast it's atmosphere? It's fun. I love that shit. Right. Yeah. I've tried to watch that shit before, and I, I just... Why? Because I, like, I knew other people that like went on it, and I was like, who, oh, who? I'm going to check this out. Dulo? No, it's like some dudes who used to be hosts on here. I can't remember their names, but they uh, they went on AD there. AD went on it? Yeah, that's him. Yes. And I watched it, and I was just like, what the fuck is this? Like, I mean, shout out it's to them, fun. but I just didn't really get... It. What don't you get? You're just gonna like sit around with your homies and be like, "You look like a palm tree." I gotta fire it up. Just let it out. Oh <laughs> my god, that was so wet. <laughs> <laughs> if I start smelling it in a few seconds, that's gonna be incredible. They don't stink. I don't really? Know yeah. You have like. Shit that just doesn't smell on yeah, it. Yeah, it don't smell like that. Damn, you know what? You're, I got a fresh hair transplant. Can you see it? Oh, that's damn. how my pubic hair looks. Look how flaky it is. Oh, damn. I should have done this before I came in here. What are you doing? You're nasty. I'm getting the, the dead skin off my head. I could probably do that in the bathroom or something. Yeah, go do it right quick. No, no, it's fine. Okay. You, it looks, it's disgusting. You look like a fucking dog with mange. It's like confetti. I know. It's all coming together. My head is. Why don't split. you just go bald headed? It feels, well, I mean, this is part of that. Oh, you mean like but instead of the hair transplant? Yeah. I don't know, man. I got a, a doctor in, in Turkey offered me up this hair transplant for free. I figured I had to go for it. It's my you third gonna go, one. You going to go to Turkey? I already did. That's it? I just got back. Yeah, this is like, it's still kind of like healing. How up. long were you there? Like five of the worst days of my life. Why was it the worst? Because you get there on a Sunday, and then on Monday, you get an eight-hour surgery on your head that leaves you with, like, you know, it's all bloody and swollen, and you got bandages on and shit. And then I had to basically, like, sit in this hotel room for, like, three, four days after that. And I was so Couldn't bored. Just yeah. ordering room service, playing poker on my computer, and that was it. And it was wow. torturous. Why not the States, though? It's way more expensive out here. How much it costs? Like ten times as much. Like this would be like three grand or like twenty five hundred in Turkey, and it would be like thirty grand here. You got bread? Just pay it. Yeah, but I got it for free out there. I just had to buy a flight. I don't know. My daddy, he was like seventy eight when he died, and he still had hair. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, must be nice. But you're kind of doing this yourself with the dreadlocks. You're gonna put pressure on the front, and it's gonna keep receding, like the fucking Marleys. Nah, you don't think so? Mm -mm. I've seen it happen. I'm half Cuban. It, it makes it. I'm not saying that you're not going to be able to hold on to your hair, but I've seen it happen to many men where they they rock the dreadlocks men proudly and then wish ball in pun me. <laughs> <laughs> Blood in Adam's eyes and he can't see. Blood on my over in Turkey but... trying to be where he can be. <laughs> Niggas trying to take my hair away. Oh, so I do... put a hex on a nigga for fucking. <laughs> you do parodies too. Yeah, multi talented. <laughs> you should put like a parody rap album. You think that, that that category just doesn't even exist anymore? Like you I got could, I got ADD too bad. But you you just couldn't be like the new Weird Al, right? Like the world is just too blown out. There's too much content. People wouldn't be amused by that shit anymore, right? Yeah, it's too much is on the. I can see pussy on Twitter. I don't want to see exactly. A, I don't want to see a parody. I, I was thinking that like I was uh, listening to the Adam Sandler's fucking comedy album that I used to listen to in 1997 all the time. With you want to do a parody with me? Yeah, sure. You know, a, a you, whole know album. Uh, you know, Chris Brown's song, I Woke Up in Chris Brown's Body? With Lil Dicky, yes. I woke up in a fat nigga's body. I say it. Yeah, but it's me uh, saying it. Uh, no, what if it's me? What if I just... You no, just... it'll be me because I woke up in a fat nigga's body. So you would be me. Oh, but... Do you get it? Yeah, but I'm just... That like, transplant fucked up your brain. Yeah, so. but, but Lil Dicky didn't actually get to say the N-word and all that, did he? Because he was acting like Chris Brown. And I'm going to be acting like you. Yes. But I'm going to be me. I you only know how podcasts work. You don't know shit about I want to go fishing with you. When? When I go to Texas. When is that? If I go to Texas, can I go fishing with you? We can add would, that to the itinerary. I would love you on my podcast. I've never really been fishing since I was like 15. I lost my other phone. I, I found it. Uh, it was at a side bitch house. And uh, I got to get my personal number. Okay, yeah, because we we thought that you were ghosting us, but it turned out you lost your phone. Now, I just I use that phone when I don't know people like that. Oh, uh, okay. And you got some clips that are questionable, but now I see you're a pure a pure human being. Oh, I'm pure. Yeah. Once we go fishing. Yeah. Where do you go from there? You gotta let me fuck your wife. 
That could be arranged. No, that is not. That will not be arranged. Why? Because I'm not going to video. I got this flashlight for you. I give you ten bands. Ten bands? That's nothing. Uh, well, nigga, apparently you flew to Turkey. My bitch made M's off the Jason Love scene. So we ain't even doing no $10,000. The highest I'll give you is dip. 30 Yeah, see, this is the problem. Now, I, anytime <laughs> I sit, I can't interview comedians anymore because they're just going to have to jump on the fucking, the, the let I me have sex with your wife. I don't want to have no, sex with totally your wife. Fine. I don't want to have sex with your wife. I well, think, that's I th- offensive. I th- No, I think marriage is sacred. Yeah, I guess I could see how some people would but think But y'all that. got some different shit going Wait, on. Wait, so you're religious now too? I'm very, I'm not very religious, but I'm pretty religious. Okay. Is this because of moving to Austin? And no, I grew up a, in the South, bro. Right. Yeah. But you're like a heathenistic How? comedian. What makes me a heathen? Well, you're talking about having a side bitch. I mean, it is what it is. I'm not married, nigga. You wouldn't have a side bitch unless you were into the the pure carnal I enjoyment got, of life. I got plenty of hoes, bro. Really? And they're so excited I'm doing this. All my ghetto bitches love this fucking. Are you serious? They be like, you ain't doing no 22 jumper or whatever. <laughs> I be like, I have. I said bitches called no jumper so with you, Adam 22. So you have just women scattered all on the Chitlin circuit? Why well, I don't do the Chitlin circuit. You don't? Yeah, my bitches are in main cities. Really? Like where? Here, Austin. Well, you had time here to accumulate them. Everywhere, bro. It's actually weird that saying Chitlin Circuit is not supposed to be racist because it felt racist. pretty racist, racist saying it right there. Yeah, but they you... say it all the time. It's like where people tour. <sighs> You're not Gary Owen. He can say Chitlin Circuit. W- what is a Chitlin? I have no idea. It's the intestines of a pig. They're disgusting. It's slave food, and some black people still eat it. I don't. Was there ever a time in which people on the Chitlin Circuit were actually eating pig guts like that? Probably because, you know, um, history-wise, they gave us black people the leftovers. That's how we came up with oxtails and chitlins and probably a few other things. My granddaddy actually, my mom's daddy was actually an indentured servant. He was born on a plantation. Really? Yeah. I got to hear some stories. Damn. So you're way closer than that than the average American, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm still friends with the people who owned him. Mm. It's weird, Well, right? their ancestors. Yeah. I mean, the, the family lineage. Yeah. We're, right. We're, we're, they love my comedy. Any of awkwardness course. there, or is it, it's just like people around town that you just happen to know, like, oh, those are the people who their parents or their grandparents owned my fucking... Well, they own most of the wealth they're making, oh. and uh, they helped me out a lot. I just bought a nice lot on a golf course hmm. for a good price because of them. They hooked it up? Yeah. It, the guy didn't want to sell it, but I wanted it that bad. Really? I'm the youngest black person on that golf course. You can just own a house on a golf course? I bought the land, bro. It's not even oh. about the house. You can tear a house down, but when you own the land, that's priceless. So what, you charge people to putt there or what? I'm building like four condos on there. I don't know a lot about golf. No, I'm going to build like four condos on there. I'm just okay. waiting for uh, zoning to approve it. Wow. I'm going to stay in one, sell two, and put the other one on Airbnb. Wow, that's fantastic. Do you dream of like moving back home or is Austin just where it's at now? I'm actually in Georgia a lot. My okay. mom's there. I retired her. I take care of her. I'm looking for like 50 to 75 acres to buy in Georgia. What the fuck are you going to do with all that? We're going to build a compound. We're going to be self-sustainable. My boy, Daniel, we're going to have like four houses. I'm going to give him a house. We're going to do all our shit there. I'm going to have cows, pigs. You're making that much money off comedy that you're thinking this big? How much you, How much you think I make? I honestly assume that comedians are just touring and not making that much. So. I have uh, full-time employees. Really? And my YouTube is six figures a year. Six figures off YouTube. Oh, and wow. I have brand deals. Wow. With like who? Black Rifle Coffee? No. <laughs> I wish. They pay good. I met a dude from there the who other day. What do we day. have, Daniel? Tushy. Manscaped. Tushy? Yeah. It's a bidet. Uh, oh. We just got another one. Like, Hello, thank. Man. Hello. We got, yeah, Hello Fresh. So people look at you and they're like, I want to use a, a wet jet stream to clean my ass. And this is the guy who's going to well, make I, me do I it. I got a wide booty, right? I never used a bidet. It'll change your life, nigga. I'll put a we just in got my better ass. help. Better help. So you Because I talk a lot about mental health. Do you really? Yeah. Okay. I have mental health issues. Damn. I guess I, I probably got kind of like a one-sided view of your comedy through mostly. I went to the, the YouTube view of the most popular videos and just started watching a lot of those. And then I watched the recent special as well, but I felt like a lot of it was like 
Let's piss the black people off. Let's hit them with How? some comedy what that joke, they don't what, like. What joke pissed the black people off in my special? Well, the George Floyd one is obviously not the special, but the the other. No, I'm just saying in, in my special. What joke? The George Floyd one is the prime example, but there was a couple other ones there too, right? So you're talking about maybe three or four jokes out of hundreds. But when you go to view the most viewed clips, because people like controversy. I know. I've seen it. Like the clips, the clips, and there's no disrespect to you. The, the most clips I've seen of you is when people are like attacking you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Those do the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's always going to give people, people don't a very one-sided view. They view. like bullshit. Mm -hmm. Until I met you, I thought you were an asshole. Based on what? Clips, nigga. That's what I'm saying. Also, I don't think that that's necessarily inaccurate. But I mean, you're a good asshole. I'm an asshole. So we see each other's asshole within. Like when you looked at my dick pic and you tried to... Shame me in front of all these new bitches I could potentially have. I just am still kind of confused by that. I can still picture it like almost perfectly in my head. I'll send it to you so you can. I have like a photographic memory, but for dicks. Put it on your uh, Patreon. I don't know if you're allowed to put a dick on there. Well, you're not allowed to put sex or masturbation, but I guess you can put a dick. So where do, hold on, OnlyFans, excuse me. OnlyFans, yes. Yeah. Different set yeah. of circumstances. You know there's a bunch of stuff you can't do on OnlyFans too, though. Like what? No peeing. What about squirting? I think as long as you don't call it peeing, you should be okay. But we've all decided collectively that squirt is pee. Yeah, but... And we know it's pee. But these porn girls are just busting it out. And they're, yeah. They're that's not why acting I don't, like it's That's pee. why I like real life porn. I don't like set up porn. You have to go along with the collective delusion. One time I had to do a podcast with only one sock on because I stepped in a bunch of pee squirt. My foot was cold the whole time. It'd be sn Them shoes is hard. What are them? At, no, DC's. Oh, yeah. You want to trade? What do you got? FTP, friends and family. I'm glad that uh, you appreciate these because I threw them on this morning instead of wearing some other shoes that I've been wearing. Like eight. I got some boots, yeah. Those are hard. Thank you, bro. How much were those? I don't even know what those are. 1400 1400 Yeah. Jesus Christ. I feel like as a comedian, you can't wear $1,400 shoes. Why? I feel like they want you to be an everyman. I am. Look at me. People don't know what these are. Yeah, that's why you got lucky, though. Fucking, if you were in like. Those weren't 14. Let me stop before my fans stop oh, hating. Okay. No, they were. They're Balenciagas. They are. But they look like ASICs. Exactly. They look regular. I like basic shit. That's I'm how you throw people up. Why are you write 45 on the front? That's my size in European size. That's what they do on Balenciagas. They just write it with yeah. a marker I on the front. I think it's dope. No, I don't know what it is, but it doesn't come off. It doesn't. Wow, that's so interesting. I just feel like there's certain things you can't do as a comedian. I feel like you can't have like. Hand and face tattoos as a comedian. I do. This is 2024, doggy. Oh, yeah. Black guy rules are different, though. Yeah. As a white dude, face tattoos is just There's like... There's a tatted white comedian out of Salt Lake City. I can't think of his name. Yeah, he probably sucks. He's probably not that funny. Oh, he's big. Oh, really? Yeah. Shit. Who else? Um, imagine how flashy Eddie Murphy was. You think he would have had a face tattoo if he was born in modern times? No, 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 because he, he's a big entertainer. He came from SNL. Hmm. Do you think you could be on SNL with a face tattoo? Uh, I'm me. You yeah. asking me? If I wasn't so controversial, I could probably be a writer on SNL right now. Mm. But they they're kind of woke, even though they just have my boy Shane Gillis on there. And how do you feel about that redemption arc? Um, I didn't like the way they were receiving him. The audience seemed like they thought it was pretty funny, but you no, see, the people in the back. Did you see the one girl in the back? <laughs> Shane's the. <f> <laughs> Shane is arguably the funniest guy alive right now. He's hilarious. Like, for real, for real. Like, to where you see him and it's like, what the fuck am I doing? Right. If you had a family full of people with Down syndrome, would you be making jokes about it? I got a retarded uncle. You do? Yeah, I tell a joke. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard you that one, yeah. Oh, it's, it's out there? I think, right? Maybe no. me having sex with a retard. Something like that. Yeah. But I have a joke about a retarded uncle. My retarded uncle that I'm trying to, like, structure properly. Because I'm... I'm very, uh, what's the word would you call it? I'm hard on myself. Like, I've got standing ovations before, and I come off stage and ask him, was that good? And he's like, are you crazy? Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm very, uh, I'm delusional. It's that, it's like I'm on the spectrum, like something's wrong with me. But I think you need to be that way because the reality is, is even if you are received well by one audience, it doesn't mean that your act doesn't need work. It doesn't mean there's not things you can improve well, upon. Well, all you, all you need to be successful is to, Appeal to 1% of the world's population. Right. 7 billion people. What's 1% of that? Uh, 700. No. The other one. 70, 70, million. 70 million. Yeah. That's enough to sell out arenas everywhere. 
That'd make you one of the biggest stars in the world, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I feel like, if anything, that's... A lot of times when I watch a comedy special, I end up feeling this is too general. What do you mean? It feels like this is did meant you, to make a lot of people laugh. Did you feel like that about mine? No, but I felt like how offensive it was made me feel a little closer to it. Okay. Because it's like, oh, no, this was made for me because it's offensive. That's what I want. Mm. I don't want that generalized comedy. Hey, guys, who's depressed today? Anybody drink kombucha? <laughs> Shut up, bitch. <laughs> but there's a lot of, even a lot of like people that I love on podcasts, I listen to their comedy and I feel like I'm listening to somebody like recite jokes I saw on Twitter six months ago. You also got to see it live. Yeah. But a lot of times that doesn't really see do it either. A, when you see a special, some people don't translate through TV. Mm -hmm. So you're only seeing 45 to 60% of what that actually was. And that missing 55 to 40% can mean a lot. Think about if somebody took 40% of your money. Mm. That's a big chunk. So, like, people see my clips and they see it in person and they're like, God damn. I've had people tell me, like, bro, I've been to this club many times for 20 years and you put on the best show I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Because I do stand up and then I roast. Mm hmm. And nowadays, the, the roasting and the, the crowd work stuff seems like it has a, an outsized effect on people well, on the internet, right? The good thing about it is you can throw it away. Like, when I do a, a roast of the crowd, like, but I don't want to put my material up there because if you've seen it, then it's not going to catch you by surprise. Mm -hmm. And that element is gone to when you see me at a live show. Like, you need to see me live or watch my special. I'm starting over right now, bro. Like, I'm doing, like, a whole new 45 minutes. It's, like, going from the beginning because, like, that was my work for like the last past four or five years, I'd say. Not really, but in a way. Four or five years leading up to that special. I've never had a special, and I've been doing mm. comedy for like seven years, like really doing comedy. From a rap perspective, it's like rappers spend their whole life building up to that first project, and then after that, you have to make another project, but not coming from the perspective of like a young dude coming up in this crazy environment. Because you got money now. You're, you're rich, you're famous, and so a lot of times the second album will be less impressive to people because you're you know, realistically talking about things that you aren't that close to. You know who, um, but I don't think it's because of the money, I think it's because of his spirit, spirituality. Kevin Gates, even though his new album, I like that one song, I think it was called Save You. No, Heal You. But I used to like, and I know it's part of like growing and becoming. Oh, that's Andy Milanakis. <laughs> he hit you up? Yeah. What's he saying? You want me to FaceTime him? Sure. All right. I haven't seen Andy in a few years. Andy has like the one of the he top He looks like ten. a 50 year old lesbian now. Yeah, he gets mad when you say that though. When you, people yeah, misgender he's, him, he's when he used to stream, people would always call him a chick and you get pissed. <laughs> This motherfucker. Andy, Andy Milanakis uh, said the N-word on this podcast before. On this one? Yeah, years ago. Yeah, but he's that type of... He like, he's with Chief Keefe in there. Yeah. So, I guess that's probably what they gave him when he joined Glow Gang. Here's your N-word pass. I was always surprised that that never made more waves back in the day. Nobody cared. People only care not because they're told to care. You think? I know so. Hmm. So if you had a white friend who wanted to use the N-word and make jokes using it and stuff, that would be fine by you? In a joke, it better be very funny. Yeah. Don't just say it for the sake of... Louis C.K. said it and made it very funny. Uh-huh. But it's like... I mean, Mexicans say the N-word. Yeah, but they feel like they actually are that thing. I get the sentiment. There's no word to discredit a white person. What about honky and cracker? Those, those. Oh, uh, look, deep. look, look how you look how look how much conviction you had when you said it. It meant nothing to you. No, doesn't mean anything. Only thing you could do is maybe to a white woman call her a cunt. Yeah, but did they even care about that? Maybe a Karen. Call a bitch who ain't a Karen a Karen. Mm. She'll get mad. Yeah, but you gotta like say it over and over and over. You gotta really antagonize her. What could I say to you that'll make you mad? I don't know, man. It's not that much. Same here. There's nothing. Like, people, black people call me a white supremacist. People that try to cancel me don't even fuck with me anyway. But, okay. 
w was it actually like hurtful or distressing in any way when you had a large percentage of the black community come after you after this George Floyd joke? Hell no. You it, was, it was stressing my mom out. Really? So yeah, because they found her information. Wow. Why, why, why is that necessary? Why can't you just go after I told, the guy? I told, I told the dude who that released it, I'm not going to say his name because I'm going to his court date in April. And I said, if you call my mom again, because I found I had my lawyer find out where he lived. I said, if you call my mom again, I call him on his phone from my personal phone. I said, this is my number. Mm -hmm. If you call my mom's house again or send anything thing to her, I will kill you. And that's not a threat. I'll give my mom all my money. Tell her take care of my kids, give her all my assets, and I will serve the rest of my life in prison. You can't kill him. You got to get somebody to kill him. I'd rather. Well, I need to be there to see his face. Maybe they could send you a video or something. Nah, I'm, bro. I'm mental. I don't get mad unless you fuck with my family. I just think you need to defer to the wisdom of the great Boosie Badass, or even you know many other rappers who like I, I can name him just because he beat it, even though. Realistically, I don't know. I don't want to be caught up with none of these. All rappers. I'm saying is, you've made all this money, <laughs> you need to be able to order a hit. Nah, I'm just playing. I would, uh, I wouldn't, uh, it's gonna do me. I'm smart now, bro. I have assets and shit. I'll just call the police. It's just not worth it. And yeah. okay, uh, calling your mom is not that big a deal. Now, okay, if they did something to her house or her herself, I could totally understand you. You think somebody gonna come on my mama street? No, my mama lives a half a mile down a private driveway on like 20 acres nobody's mm. coming okay well that's good yeah leave and it's dark. alone and what we the got the plenty fuck? of pistols yeah and rifles shotguns i dare somebody it'd be like call of duty for me but so just the, <laughs> just the twitter outrage and the presumably it was on instagram and tiktok and all that shit like that wasn't enough to get to your mom it had to be like somebody actually getting in touch with her my mom was 70 bro she don't read none of that shit she doesn't no i i i from my I perspective, told, I told my family it was coming before it was coming. Something has to go extremely viral before it starts hitting my parents. Um, when my parents hit me up and said that they read a New York Post article about me buying my girl a Lamborghini to congratulate her for doing her first scene with another guy, that's when I realized, oh, what's your name? That's viral. I don't know. Can you buy me a car? Probably not. I didn't even buy her a Lamborghini. That was a uh, joke. Oh, I got a fart again, bro. Let's do it. <laughs> 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 I drank that kombucha this morning. That's why I don't stink. It, can farting be violence? Like if you're in a, a cramped car with a bunch of people and you fart. Oh yeah, we we, we squabbling. That's violence, yeah. right? In like a woke sense. You're like, not gonna believe this, but my family is a so big family of farters. <laughs> no, I got family in L.A. That there's some big time gang bangers, bro. What gang? Can I say it? Yeah, of course. Ma Piru. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Damn. When, when this shit was going on, he heard one of my relatives, like, bro, I got family uh, from there. Uh, what are they? Oh. I got to get you with WAC 100. He's the, the the biggest rooster. Do you identify as a rooster? What's that? That's a nickname for the Pyrus. Uh, I, I'm not a gangbanger, but I'm my family. Somebody came on here the other day and was dissing the Pyrus, and I didn't realize that what he was doing. He was using a term to... To this that that would more affect my family than me, right? You know what I'm saying? They uh, really about that shit. It's bro. some pretty obscure shit. They probably wouldn't even. They know really the fuck about he was that shit, about. bro. When the shit was going down, like they was caught. That's why, like, when everything was going down, I was like, man, like shit, because they called me. They like who, like who? What you need us to do? Really? And I was like, nah, bro. You know, I, I don't even really get down like that. I was like, like chill. Right. Like, what are you gonna do? It's always weird when you're getting canceled and you have those people in the, in your life that think that they're going to be able to like commit a violent act to stop this. It's like no, <laughs> they that, were, that's not how this works. He heard, bro. I had people calling me like, "Who you need me to kill?" I'm mm -hmm. like, "No, bro, we're not doing that." Right. I'm like, "Bro, don't say that on my phone." Wow. <laughs> Tariq Nasheed was the the main person I saw going crazy about it. You know him? No. Or, no, you don't even know him. Okay. I don't worry about people that because here's one thing I do know. I believe he invented the term FBA for foundational black Americans. He used to be a far right conservative. I think he still kind of is in a sense, right? I mean, <sighs> you can't be if he's. There's a lot of different ways know, to bro. define that. I don't but. know. I don't want to talk about him. I don't know him. Okay. Uh, but the thing is, uh, what was I saying? Fuck, what was I just saying? Tariq Nasheed and uh, him going in on you. Oh, yeah. I don't worry about people that are 
outrage online. Uh huh. You're not gonna do shit because my cousins ain't finna put out no video. Right. You know. Damn, nigga, you just texting while I'm here. I'm not texting. I'm looking for my fucking questions for you. Where are they though? David Lucas. Okay. Your name like doesn't look like a rapper name, so it didn't even really stand out to me. What did you just say? Because <laughs> all my other names in my notes section are like X4, Big Deal, Freeway, Chito Ranas. You and, need to do what. And then uh, it's David Lucas. It just doesn't really like look like a name that, of a person I would be interviewing. You need to do what Genius does and annotate my interviews. No, no, no. And do like when you have rappers here, have them do like a song right there mm. and put it on your channel. We do a little bit of that, but honestly, that's kind of like one of the most played out things in rap media now. Everybody does a thing where they hang a mic and they make you rap into it. Well, make yours different. Make Put it on OnlyFans and make the ones who are down get their dick sucked while they freestyle. All these rappers are gay as fuck. You don't know. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Me and Adam are best friends now. It, we are. If you were on a tour bus with like 10 of your favorite comics... And you had to fart. Would you? Would you let that out? But I guess if it doesn't smell, yeah, comedians really are we're, we're we're nasty. They're like really into farting. I ain't gonna say that, but what are we gonna do? If I was around Jay Z, I wouldn't fart. I wouldn't care if we had rapport. Because you'd be like that nigga be farting. I just feel like Jay Z wouldn't think a fart was funny no matter what. <laughs> yeah, but he seems kind of like not funny when it comes no. to that stuff. He's too serious. <laughs> That's how he'll laugh. <laughs> <laughs> One time I was listening to Memphis Bleak on a podcast. I love Memphis Bleak. Love Memphis Bleak. But they started that your bitch? They started making fart references. Like <sighs> talking about farting in the studio and shit. Uh -huh. And he shut it all down. He was like, no, 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 no. We ain't we ain't talking about Old school that. dudes don't play that shit. He took it as if they were talking about gay shit. <laughs> Which I'm used to people like I'll say some gay shit and then the rappers will be like nah 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 nah, nah. We, ain't, we ain't joking old about that. Old school people don't play with that, bro. Old school people don't like fart. I remember when I fart in front of my. It's disrespectful. It's, it's called ill mannered in the south. Right. I remember I burped one time when I was a jit at the kitchen table and my granny was like was ready to backhand me. Uh huh. It's, it's just like <laughs> I think I'm out of. You don't smell shit. No. Man. Okay, sorry. You smell that hair transplant. <laughs> Burn that yeah. bit probably smell like goddamn burnt what, rubber what, bands. What if like a bird lands on it and like I can't feel it? That shit crazy because you look like LeBron up top, nigga. You know? Can you see it moving? You, like, you about to call a timeout, nigga. Oh, LeBron <laughs> did get one, huh? Yeah, he did. And Jamie Foxx. Probably half the NBA has it. You should wear a hat, or you can't. Uh, I could, but I never wear a hat, so I like. How many of these can I take with me? Go crazy. You want to smoke right now? No, I can't. I can't. You can't smoke on camera. You want to no. be funny? No, the interview. I, I told you, I. I have um, anxiety and shit. I, I can't smoke and still do this. I feel like they want to see the like shriveled up, weird, not funny version of you. Well, okay. They probably don't even know they want to see that. Yeah. You know, oh, fuck. No, you we might have to take that part out about um, the side bitches. God damn, I just thought about what you call it. She's going to watch this. That's up to you. Fuck. I'm gonna tell her, you. You got that, that many bitches, huh? Definitely take this part out. Oh, okay. But, uh, <laughs> um, no, my live-in girlfriend. Okay. Yeah, she got so much dirt on me. That's why I don't get rid of her. If you live with her, yeah, you should definitely. Well, she her. lives with me, nigga. She don't pay no rent. Really? Yeah. In a high-rise, nigga. In Austin. Yeah. Drives my cars. Drives a Porsche. Drives a. But this is not gonna be on the pot. Drives a Porsche. Drives fucking. Truck. For the record, we're not cutting any of this out unless you like reprimand us afterwards. Oh, I'll see you in season. Legal desist. threats, yeah. I'll see you in season. Desist. Oh, I remember we could put it out and then cut it out right after, no, so nigga. it'll be like a little nugget for the people who are like hardcore fans. <sighs> you can put it on Patreon, but you're not <laughs> releasing this on YouTube. <laughs> you want your YouTube shut down? I can have that. Can you really? Yeah. How? My special is not eighteen or over or taken down, and I said tranny and fag. Yeah, you can say fag. That's fine. No, you can't. Yeah, you can. They took uh, Fahim's special down. Really? Yeah. Just for saying that? I have a YouTube representative. I have a YouTube agency. Yeah, YouTube, but they're so all over the place. Like I'll take your I'll take your YouTube channel now. Because you said fag? No, because you're trying to release that shit. I mean, I don't actually care. I'm just playing. You know, <laughs> I know you're not gonna release. You got nice teeth, are those your you got nice teeth, are those yours? Yeah. He's you know what's crazy, original. bro? Back during the pandemic, my brother saw you at the clinic. What clinic? Let me ask him. The STD clinic? Maybe. He, had, mean, he took a picture of you on the slide. That's probably the only clinic I go to. Hold up. He could be on the He'll love to be on the podcast, my little brother. Yeah. His dick would be hard right now if he was here. Let's get him in here. You don't want him. I like how married to the, the vapes you are. You 
Hello. Hey, yo, I'm on no jumper night right now. What clinic did you see Adam at? Uh, the one in uh, Studio City. Was he getting an STD shot? Uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right, send me, you got the picture? Send me the picture. I got the video. Send it to me. You got a video of me in an STD clinic? What the fuck? Yeah. All right, bro. All right, bro. Peace. That's extra crazy because normally when you go to the STD clinic, you see like maximum of like one, maybe two porn stars in there at the same time. Uh, <laughs> that means I don't give a fuck about what you're talking about. <laughs> right, because you, if you were doing a podcast with Jay-Z right now, you would not have done that. I wouldn't do a podcast with Jay-Z. But I feel like I'm probably getting a better version of you than Jay -Z, Jay Z would get. I wouldn't do his podcast. Well, he doesn't have one, but if he did. <sighs> I don't feel like it would do anything for me because his brand is... Niggas that think they're better than everybody else Corona because they have an LLC. I buy art. Yeah. That type of shit. I drink Moscato ass nigga. <laughs> Toes out at dinner ass nigga. Tuxedo with sandals ass nigga. So when you moved to Austin, you said, I am not that kind of guy. I've been like this, bro. That's the thing. Like, people who know, know. I told you I used to game bang or whatnot, but I mean, I'm, I'm still a, like, if a nigga run into me on the street, they're going to be like, this nigga is a thug. Jay-Z had 92 bricks. Bro, I, I did all that. Allegedly. You Allegedly. had 92 bricks? Maybe not that much. Yeah, come on. But, but I used to, bro, I was a horrible drug dealer. I remember the first time I allegedly sent weed back home mm -hmm. uh, and some other shit from L.A., and I didn't know anything about getting took because I've always been naive because I moved with my grandparents in the suburbs when I was young, mm -hmm. but me and my mom lived in the hood. So I'm like a hood kid growing up in the suburbs, and would go to the hood on the weekend. So I had a little bit of hood in me, mm. but my mama's straight G. Really? Y'all a nigga. He know my mama. That bitch will sock you, nigga, right now. Really? Swear to, if you said something about me, she fight you before I would. Swear. I feel like she would like me. But if I'm telling you, she don't play about like me. Like, if bro. she got the idea that we were cool, she would be willing, she would be like laughing, like having a good time. Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But she'd be ready to turn up at the drop of a dime. And I, you know how black I am? I got two black baby mamas. Really? That's pretty black. Yeah. That's pretty fucking niggerish. Are you planning on getting white baby mamas now that you've made it? Um. Um. They. You know, I heard a rumor that I was married to a white woman. That sounds like something that people would have tweeted after they yeah, were canceling they you for yeah. that joke. They said he has a white wife. I'm like, nigga, what? They always say that about everybody, right? I'm not even married. Uh. <laughs> Love is love. If I meet a white girl that I love, or if I meet a whoever, like, be, uh, you, you got to be a strong girl to put up my shit. But if you want to listen to Twitter or the Black Lives Matter department, they're going to tell you that really you should be able to choose who you fall in love with and that if, if it's a white woman, you should just throw it aside and then find yourself somebody the same color as you. You don't we, go for we, that? We, can't, we continue to perpetuate stereotypes when the world's not racist. And I, I say this all the time. The world is not racist, bro. They if if the world's racist, why am I able to survive being a white supremacist? White people love me just as well as black people love me, dog. So it's like I'm tired of black people being told how to think. Mm. Open your eyes, go somewhere. You're not going to get hung. I don't think racism really exists anymore. Maybe prejudice, maybe bigotry, but racism, no. I think there's plenty of racism, well, but I will say that a lot of people seem oblivious to the say, fact that there this? is dramatically less racism at this point, probably less than there's Where ever Where is been. it at? We go to these cities, don't we, Daniel? We go to these places, bro. We go to these fucked up cities. Not just trying to let so you So you do. tweeted at- uh, don't, No, 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 sir. At someone? Just a joke, just a joke. They didn't have any white guns, so I had to settle for the BLM edition, and it's a Glock with a scope on it. That's not a Glock. That's a Springfield uh, Echelon. Okay. To, to my uh, dumb so white brain, it looks like a Glock. But yeah. I love guns. You do. Does it piss you off going places like this where it's more complicated to carry them? I carry mine, but the security guard made me leave it. So you that's your actual security guard? You, you're not taking any chances? Yeah, that's my security guard. But I'm saying I carry my own pistol, but your security guard made me. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you, do, you got a guy out there too, right? Yeah, I don't fuck around. Yeah. But you really think that, like, I mean, the people who canceled you on Twitter are, like, the least likely to do anything violent to anyone ever, Well, I really right? only take it, to, it was really for my protection here, because I know the people, I didn't, I didn't know what I was walking into. Oh, at No Jumper. Yeah. Okay. 
I, we've been walking around the streets of LA. Instead, you're greeted by Flacco, who's like exactly. Al- but you get what I'm saying. There's a lot of people here that disagree with what I say, mm-hmm. and if they know you, I don't know you. I don't know here who here in your crew doesn't like me that know that I'm coming today. That's ready to set me up when I come through or leave. I think that is a more reasonable concern for some of the rappers who come here, like Quando Rondo. When we talked about him doing an interview here, there are people who do podcasts on No Jumper. That Quando Rondo, if he were to see them, it would definitely be a thing. For for you, like like of all the hosts on here, absolutely zero of them would give a fuck. They would gladly probably have a conversation with you about the George Floyd joke, but nobody's gonna be like angry about it. Well, I mean, bro, here's my thing. I don't employ the easily offended. Good. Um, I do possible. this because I take care of so many people. Mm. Regardless of how much money you think I make, bro, I have I have a whole team. That I, I travel with six people. Mm. So, I mean, you know, I have stuff. To, and I mean, you know, got to protect that person. Got to, you know what I'm saying? The, them, them motherfuckers call, what y'all call me, dad? Yeah. <laughs> you like, make them say that? No, nigga, they started oh, okay. that shit. Him and my buddy, Matt Damon. Mm. Yeah. Matt Damon? Huh? I know him. Yeah, I called, I called him gay for that shit. For calling you dad? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of gay. Because when we're on the road, I take care of everything. Uh-huh. They don't have to spend a dollar. I just feel like that's how people should be treated. Right. Like we go eat a nice dinner everywhere we go, spend, you know, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars on the team. Eight hundred or nine hundred thousand dollars? Eight hundred, nine hundred or a thousand dollars. Eight hundred thousand? Bitch, I better eat some well for that. <laughs> I wanna eat human if I'm spending eight hundred thousand. <laughs> but I okay. got something to show you. In my mind, a comedian who's on the on the road touring doesn't make that much money unless they think, get to a big, big com- level. How much do you think a comedian make at a comedy club? I don't know because when I like I have very little experience with this, but I'm pretty sure when you like pop in at the comedy store or whatever, you're not getting a lot, right? You're getting like very yeah. meager amounts. Yeah. But when well, you're I'm on the about, road, it's better. I say at a comedy club, not where I'm at right now, but a big comedian can make like eighty grand a weekend. But that's playing to like huge sold out crowds no. of like a thousand people. No, that's a four hundred seater. If your tickets are about fifty bucks. Because you're doing, let's see. I'll tell you what they'll walk away with. I mean, a 400-seater times. 400-seater times, just say you're doing, just say your median ticket is 55. Just say you're doing $45 general admission, $60 VIP. So just say that might equal to 55. I don't think it does. But that's, look how much they do the show. Okay. Just say you do five yeah. shows. And com- comedians normally get... Uh, like 80 if you got a good agent. So that's how much you'll make. Right. I have very few reference points for this, but I remember like going to... You know, Tony's a millionaire, right? Tony Hinchcliffe? Yeah, he just bought a $4 million house. The funny shit you said was when you said, I can't tell if he's a dude or a girl. (laughs) Like, I never even thought of Tony like that before, but me and Adam 22 got the same doctor. Whoa, got? that's not an STD clinic. That must have been when I, uh, oh, okay. So I got a, a sty on my eye. I went to Hawaii, and for some reason on the flight, like a, a big bubble sty thing emerged on my eye, and then I had to go to the do- the, the eye doctor when I got back. Mm. And they basically told me I was fine. You want to see my new credit card? Sure. Ooh, white privilege card. <laughs> <laughs> it's very heavy. Yeah. White no, my, my boy gave me that. It's like a novelty thing. I figured. This is it. The pinnacle of all humanity. You have arrived. You hold in your hands the key to happiness, success, infinite wisdom, and power. <laughs> you can do anything. What's that fool name? Congrats. Shout out to my boy, uh, the black redneck. Does it say his name on here? Um, no, I don't think White so. Privilege Card Dot Store. Joel. Joel Patrick. Joel yeah, Patrick, made in America. Yeah, that's yeah. his name, Joel Patrick. Yeah. That's not actually what it looks like. The white privilege card, the one I have. Oh, where were we? You were asking me questions. Open your phone back up. Okay, <laughs> I actually didn't ask any of the questions that I wrote right. down. This nigga hacking record. That's talking. why I like black girls. You can beat the shit out of them. I think when I was talking can about, can you tell the whole fucking joke? <laughs> no, that's this the quote the- I wrote down. <laughs> <laughs> tell the whole. That joke. stood out to me. I was like, okay, that's an offensive joke, bro. This you are the <clears throat> you are the epitome, epitome. Of, uh, yeah, epitome. Excuse me. Either way. Epitome. Epitome. <laughs> That's how you read it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you are the epitome. Do not release me saying epitome. <laughs> That's all I need. <laughs> you, I just, I heard that joke and I was like, wow, this guy really ain't scared of shit. Okay. You are TikTok. 
condense down the entire right. joke into just that. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not talking about that. I mean, joke. they could watch the comedy special. Yeah, watch the comedy special, then we'll come back. But is domestic violence one of your hobbies? <sighs> You've never shook a bitch? I've been pushed to the brink. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've never beat a girl. I never like hit one. But for sure I've like grabbed and uh, every man has. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about the woman. I like spicy women. So spicy women, they get drunk, nigga, they get up in your shit. It's like, hey, yeah. what are you doing? Right. Yeah. I had a girlfriend when I was like maybe 21 who I have like a lot of memories of having to like double hold her wrists for like 20 minutes until she decided that she didn't want to beat the shit out of me anymore. Damn. And that's like, you know, if she had been a little bit stronger or a little bit more resourceful, that could have easily turned into like a full-blown What'd you do fight. before this? Rode BMX Besides bikes the, the for bike. like 20 years. Oh, shit. Yeah. Since I all, see it. Since I was like 12. Where you from? New Hampshire. Damn, you are white, white. Yeah. We've been up there. The best kind. Ain't shit up there, bro. Yeah. A couple boring. of Mexicans, one or two niggas. That We're mostly like Puerto Ricans. Or whatever. We, uh, we didn't really have Mexicans when I was a kid. I don't know. Maybe they got them now. You look young. Oh, how old are you? 41? Forty. Oh, 40, forty. It's the hair transplant. The the yeah. If you dyed your beard, you could yeah. You could be out here lying like a motherfucker. I do, but you, you got kids. Just a little grown out. Yeah, I got a three year old daughter. A three year old. Yeah. Yeah. What do you how, like? Can I ask a few questions? Sure. How was it after she fucked Jason? It was fine. You're so secure. I like that. Like, that's crazy. That's, well, I mean, I agreed to it beforehand. It was a little weird to, like, just kind of. How long did it take you to get the pussy again? That night. I told her. I'm like, if you're going to go do this, I got to hit I'd it have made that bitch sit in the tub. I got to reset it. I would have made her sit in the tub of Epsom salt. I, I think Epsom salt is a scam. I don't know. It sounds good. Yeah. But does it really do anything? I don't know. Maybe, bro. Shit. I don't know. Damn. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't know, it's been like six months or something and like the, the last rapper I interviewed last night he also really had to like question me about it how'd you get to that point doing porn for many many years I guess you know what I'm saying the way you just said oh let me let my girl we have been doing porn for a long time and I think we realized just how viral it would be and that so is it just business or can y'all see other people too um, we don't do anything uh, outside of our relationship, really, besides, you know, occasional girl hookups. But then I fucked her with another male performer, and that was a good time. Why don't you bring Charleston White on here? He doesn't want to come on. He really? says that I'm not the kind of white boy that he likes. I love Charleston White. He said I'm too racist. Or not racist enough, actually. Hey, Charleston White, if you're listening, or Charleston White people, tell them to hit me up. Uh, I got some stuff that me and Charleston White can do together. You're going to take him fishing? Um, he's gonna charge you like ten. I like grand. how he talk. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah, yeah. No, he's hilarious. He is, but he won't do anything for free. Because I, I know a lot of people have tried to like book him to come on their podcast and shit, and he's no. Get that bag, Charleston. I'm not mad at him. That dude, he's bro, like, if you put him on your pod, it's like an automatic six figure views. I know a shitload of people who have nothing going on podcast wise that have got like a million views from having him on. So I guess I understand. And he's loyal to uh, say cheese. Sean yeah. Cotton. I like that's bro, Charleston White cracks me up, bro. Yeah, that's who put him on. Yeah. Sean Cotton got behind him and turned him up. Yeah. Now you're out here. I, my dog and Sean Cotton's dog, we uh use the same dog trainer. Do you really? Yeah, dude, he uh he he trains uh like attack dogs. Doesn't he live like four hours away from you? Yeah, the 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 trainer is like two and a half hours away from me. You travel two and a half hours to get your dog trained? No, my dog stays there for like Months at a time. Oh, so it's a year program. Oh, really? Okay. So he'll. Uh, she you left be, your dog there for a year. Listen, God the dog's it. only gonna be alive for like twelve years. Listen, bro, I have a cane corso. What's that? An Italian massive, huge dog. Okay. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to, uh, you know, like when I'm not home, something, you know, my kids there, my mom kind of my house a lot, so if they're there. And I'm not home, you know, uh, something to just secure for, for them. Uh -huh. So um, I found a guy who I really liked, and he showed us uh, what his dogs can do. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're training my dog. So she'll go away. <clears throat> she'll go, and she's obedient, like sit, stay, commands and shit. So, like, she'll go away for, like, eight weeks at a time, and then I'll get her for, like, a month. Mm. And that doesn't 
have you seen significant enough improvement yes. in the dog's behavior that's worth it? Yes. Because people think I'm crazy because we'll send our dog away for a month or two at a time to get his behavior it's, fixed. If 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 you have the money, it's it's pricey. If you have the money to send them to somebody who boards and trains, right? Yes, and then he will do training with me, so that he know so that they know this don't just apply to me, right? But dogs like that, you have to like be stern, like. If you just tell her to, like, if she's, just say, for instance, if he walks, or just say a stranger walks in the house, and she's, like, really on their ass, uh -huh. you can't tell her, like, off. Right. You got to say it with some, like, authority. Right. Yeah. That shit's a problem. Yeah. But a lot of people out here just have crazy-ass dogs, and they just never train them yeah, or anything, huh? Yeah. Like yeah. You go over to somebody's house, and the dog is just on you. There's a dog park on the roof of my uh, building, and, bro, like, I try to take her, like, 2 a.m. to win because there's a relief area. Uh -huh. So, like, I don't really try to take her during the hot hours because, like, I'm like, yo, you shouldn't have a dog that runs up on a 100-pound dog aggressive. Uh -huh. She'll, good thing she's she's well-mannered, but she'd fucking kill your dog. Right. Yeah. yeah, my dog, I have two dogs. I'm not really much of a dog guy. What but kind of dog you got? They're like poodles. Dumb dogs is Aggressive and like crazy. St. Bernadoodle or some They're shit. And then the other aggressive. one is some other fucking people. I got Frenchies too. Yeah? Yeah. I'll never say my kennel because people will not support just because it's me. But I'm partnered with another guy. How would you feel if the, the kennel sent you a letter saying we can no longer service your dogs because you're a racist? Uh, he wouldn't do that because he's a, a huge fan. Yeah? Well, what if the mob got to him? They wouldn't know who he was. Mm. Silent partners, doggy. Imagine it is what it is. I'll sell my I'll, I'll I'll pay a chick to sell them dogs. Russell Simmons got kicked out of a yoga class when <laughs> like probably five six years ago. But I remember there being but a he story allegedly about it. like did something to a woman, right? I did a lot a, of them. I did a joke, bro. You know, I'm you know, my record is clean because like if anything, it would already have been out by now. Yeah, it's time. Yeah. This was this was your time for anybody right. to get their shit right. out, yeah. and nothing came. So it's like, okay, yeah. So you got to feel pretty good about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Question number three. From me? Yeah, nigga. Hmm. That's why I like black girls. You can beat the shit out of them. <laughs> We're not talking about that I'm just unless you go to the preface. I, I don't remember. That dating was better when fat girls had less confidence. It was. I, girls, I know exactly where you're coming from. Fat girls that. got more confidence now, bro. That's what it seems like. Like, bro, I, I used to buy condoms in fat girls' faces, and they'd be like, what's that for? For you, bitch? What you mean? Right. Like, you can't buy a condom in front of a girl? I mean, like, you know what I'm saying. Like, just be disrespectful with it. Right. Like, sorry, fat women. I'm a fat guy, so I can talk about it. Uh, but, yeah, the, 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 a lot of big girls have a shit ton of confidence now because the skinny friends think that it's the thing to do. I'm a big guy, and I don't preach fat positivity i think it's that the fat girls have consumed enough relatable content on tiktok that they no longer feel alone in the world they actually feel like they know who their tribe is they get enough positive reinforcement from tiktok or whatever tumblr communities that they're in no, it's, it's that they're no longer this like frozen shell of a person that we're used to when we were younger where every fat girl was Totally, like, th their brain had been ravaged by, like, Revlon ads that made them feel like less of a human being. I think there's a place for fat people. For sure. And I know not to go to a beach with my shirt off. Why not? Why? Everybody don't want to be subjected to that. To me, I don't, like, I, wearing a shirt at the pool or an, at the beach is, like, way gayer than just showing everybody your big fat a, man titties. I don't wear a, I don't wear a shirt. I wear a jersey. It's, it's dope. So you're that guy in a basketball jersey. Yeah, but I don't really get in the pool. Really? Nah. Bro. I swim. I like to swim. Where it's yeah, you like swimming, but you won't take your fucking shirt off because you're scared of people oh, seeing how fat you are? If I get in the ocean, I will, yeah. Oh, okay. But I'm saying, like, if I'm just parading around the beach. Uh-huh. Yeah, like if I want to, if I want a beach body, then I'll make a beach body. You see what I'm saying? The like, beach is a place where I've already accepted that I'm going to see a bunch of fat people. I haven't. Really? And I'm a fat. Do you feel like, as a black man, that you have a little bit of a weird relationship with the ocean? No. I grew up around water. Okay. I, I grew up uh, with a grandfather who didn't let you have no fear. Mm -hmm. And if you did have fear, you better not show him because he's going to make you do it. My granddaddy uh, started a business. He uh, owned apartment complexes. 
and uh, he would make us go under there when animals died or if an animal got trapped. Like, because in the, in the South, we'll have basements or like the walkouts, mm-hmm. and some of them are crawl spaces. So animals would die, and we would have to get a flashlight and go up under there and get them. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you got to do that shit. Because my granddaddy, you know, raised us with that iron that iron hand, bro. Mm-hmm. So it's like, shit. I just, during my time period living in Brooklyn, I had this realization that some significant portion of black people think that there's something gay about going to the beach. <sighs> or at least that's, that was the vibe in Brooklyn at the time. Mm, that's weird. And then some gay Asian dudes were splashing me when I was in the, mm-hmm. with, and, and like my black friends were watching me in the ocean after having just told me that it was gay for me to go in the ocean. And then I go in and a couple of gay Asian dudes start splashing me. And that really sealed it for them. Hmm. I see. But they also, these dudes would go in the ocean with their fucking fitted hats on. <laughs> I get it. Uh, Down to their, like, up to their calves, and they'd just be feeling like they were really living on the wild side. Got you. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Those, I, I mean, I got plenty of friends that like water. I, I bought a boat. Mm. Some black people are scared of water. Mm. Yeah, because none of my black friends really want to get on the boat. Really? Like, because they didn't learn how to swim. I know how to swim. Mm. And I have some who will. You know what I'm saying? But some of them are like, I ain't get on no boat. I'm like, what? Bro, you you are a killer. Why won't you get on a boat? Right. But that's, I mean, shit, that is some white privilege shit right there, is that white people just learn to swim a lot more than black people. That's just I think it's access to resources. Yeah, for sure. Because like I told you, I grew up in the suburbs, bro. Mm. Uh, even though, like, I was born in the hood and whatnot. And uh, when I moved to the suburbs with my grandparents, dude, like, we had a community pool. And, I mean, well, in Macon, there was a community pool uh, in some of the hoods, too. So, like, there's a lot of... I think your view might be limited to, like, California people. Mm. And uh, the South is a, another world. Well, keep in mind, in L.A., the beach is right there, and nobody's going there. Yeah, I've never... That cold-ass water, it's not a good beach. Right. The water's cold, no matter if it's 90 degrees outside. Like, people in general don't go to the fucking beach, but when you hear, like, dudes from, like, real neighborhoods and, like, gangster-ass dudes, they especially don't go to the beach because the beach is the fucking my op family area don't really, to a lot of them. My family don't really leave, like, Compton. You know what I'm saying? And when they... they I, I made... I, I bought them a table at... Uh, when I did the improv, uh, the Hollywood improv, mm. and I bought them a table, and, bro... I was like, fuck. <laughs> they were going crazy or what? Man, I had one of my cousins. Uh, he uh, he was walking around, man. He was a little loaded. And he was like, hey, hey, Relly, I'm on one. He was like, no, <laughs> nobody better not say shit to me. And I'm like, bro, we had a comedy show, bro. Like, your, like, your guard can be down. You know what I'm saying? Just like, you, let you know. I'm going to fuck somebody up. He was, I was like, your guard. <laughs> like, remember that day? He, kept, he, he, couldn't stay in the, he couldn't stay in the showroom more than like five minutes, bro. <laughs> right. He was like, I'm on one, nigga. Nigga, hey, I need to go outside. Right. I'm like, I'm like, look, you're fine. Like, I promise I wouldn't bring you anywhere that's dangerous. Uh huh. But it was just, it was just like, you know, like seeing my family who, you know, it, gang banging is their culture. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, even a mama, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she'll get active. Right. Like, for real, for real. And it's just like, that's their culture. And I love it. I love when I go visit them because that's something I didn't grow up. Like, when I was growing up in Georgia, I don't think we really had gangs like that in the 90s. Like, maybe a couple, but now it's like you go to Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody got a set. Mm. But I'm from I'm from Macon. So it's like, it's it's different now, bro. You know, so when I came to L.A., my eyes really got open to, like, that color shit. Mm. Yeah, does that kind of make you feel like you're from a lesser state because the gangs from L.A. basically came out and, like, colonized the South? Nah, bro, because um, shit, bro, I, I I feel safer around L.A. gangsters than I do them Georgia boys. Them mm-hmm. Like, think about Georgia and Florida, how they look with goals and locks and them big, big they look terrifying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, L, like L.A., Jer- Jerry Curl and a dicky suit. L.A., LA bro, vibe. they have, they, like, all the L.A. game bangers, I'm not talking about every game banger, so don't come to my Instagram saying that, but all the all all the dudes that I know that like bang, mm-hmm. bro, they're like they're like pretty boys almost. You know what I'm saying? Like they fly, mm. they have their outfits on. You know what I'm saying? And it's like they will still bust your head. 
You know what I'm saying? No, totally. Yeah, bro, they be out here flying shit in Balenciaga and track suits. I'm like, dang, I'm like when I first came to LA, bro, it was it was eye opening. I'm like, you you bang? And I was like, damn, that's crazy. Yeah. But because like when I first came to LA, I thought I mean you do still see some of those guys. Like I thought it was gonna be the Dickies with the flannel shirt, you know what I'm saying, and the Chucks. Uh huh. But it's like it's not really like that. Nah, they left that alone a long time ago. I feel like a, a dress code like that though, it's just it, it became so iconic during a certain era. That if you dress like that now, you're just going to be perceived as basically like doing a pair. It's like a Halloween costume yeah. vibe in the same way that like a flat top is a cool ass haircut. Right. The fucking eight ball jacket is a cool ass jacket. The I rope it. chain was a cool ass chain. You put it all together. You're Big Daddy Kane. Nobody's yeah, looking at man. you like, oh, that's just how you dress. They're looking at you like, oh, look at this fucking goofball trying to dress like something that already happened. I learned quickly about the hats out here. Yeah. Bro, but that's nobody shit. pressed you, right? Um, I've I have scars in my head from where I've got into uh, squabbles with a Mexican dude. Like, bro, out here for your hat? No, it was more I was in the wrong area. Okay, I was in the wrong area at the wrong time, and I didn't know. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, being aloof coming from Georgia, I didn't know. You learn quickly. You learn very quickly. Really, out here? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. where were you? Uh, East East LA. Okay. Good. And now, like, now that I'm a comedian and, and Hispanics know me, they embrace me, dog. So they see me like, oh, you that funny fool? Huh? Mm. Hey, bro, I fuck with you, dog. The Hispanics so, love entertainment. Yeah, yeah. They like, 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 like they watch TV shows. They watch comics. They like bands. They like, they, you know, it's just like they seem like they're just real into shit in general. So if you in any way participate in that, they're fucking with you, bro. So many, so many gangsters from LA all over since the George Floyd thing has happened have reached out to me and be like, bro, if you got any fucking problems, really? Yeah, bro. I was in Chicago. And uh, I don't want to misquote the dude's gang. I'm sorry, dude. The but, BDs, uh, the GDs. I don't know. It, it was no. he was a Mexican dude, oh. Hispanic dude, and he came to me and he rolled to the show, bro. He was deep. It was probably like thirty of them. And like when they came, I was like, oh shit, nigga. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what did I say to piss this motherfucker off? And he was like, what's up, fool? You funny? He was like, if you need to go anywhere, anywhere around here, hit me up, fool. Mm. And I was like, oh shit. It's like, like the, the, that's the thing. That's the. I'm not a rapper. You know what I'm saying? So if I do come to your hood, I'm a comedian. What I'm going to do, joke on you? Hmm. I'm not here to cause harm to your area. And they know that and they separate it. And so that's why, like, comedians, we can kick it with the gangsters. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, for real, for real. You know, and uh, that's lovely. I'm accepted everywhere I go. That's something I always notice with uh, the the BMX riders and the skateboarders is that we could be in, like, the worst fucking neighborhood in in New York. Mm Mm-hmm. And dudes would just show you love because they would just kind of like you're not a threat. You're making use of like the fucking handrail in front of the corner store that nobody normally <laughs> does anything with. And so you're out there in like a dangerous ass place. You got like a video camera that's worth thousands of dollars right, right, right. and everybody's just fucking with you. If anything, they're just yeah. filming you and talking about it and thinking it's dope. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's dope. Yeah, it's a weird dynamic. You, you want to do these mushrooms I just found in my pocket? I forgot I had them. Nah, but I'll take them. You want it? No, I'm not. No. You got to take it right now. No, nigga. No, I'm thinking about taking some later. So I can go get on the plane and trip out? You can take these with you for sure, yes. Yeah, I'm going to take them. You want to take it right now? No. We might this, have some more land. This around. is not the place to do shrooms. Yes, it is. Infinity Nature. Silo. Nature. I took a couple of these the other day and went to see a band. It was the best. It was fucking sick. Yeah. I was like, okay, because like, you ever heard the Mountain Goats? What's that? It's like a folk indie type band. I take this shit and then me and my girl hop in the Uber and go to the fucking show. You ain't got no drive all that money you got? Hell no. I enjoyed this show so much more than I probably like would have without the mushrooms. Yeah. Except at one point I look at my fucking email and somebody had sent me like a photo like from the interview and I click on it and it's blurry and I'm like almost about to text them and be like, yo, why the fuck is this photo so so low resolution? And then I realized it was the mushrooms. Yeah. My, a, a good microdose is good for the brain. That's what this shit is good but for. But I like to do that like when I fish. Really? Yeah. I like to be in nature. I don't like, like, I don't know y'all enough yet to be over here just taking shrooms with y'all. No disrespect. Fair. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You only want to do that with somebody. Like, you, you can get drunk with someone you barely know, right? Mm-hmm. But mushrooms is like too much pressure. It's, uh, yeah, it's cerebral. Mm. Liquor is more, liquor is cerebral, but it, it like lowers your defenses and stuff. What about just getting high? Nah. You don't like getting high with strangers? Nah. I ain't see you roll none of them blunts, dog. 
No, you're right. I don't know what the fuck they're putting in those things. But yeah. People are just smoking them left and right, and they seem like they're all living. So. <laughs> yeah. You you don't have like a getting high ritual though. Um, me getting high is probably. You got your little nicotine guy there, huh? I probably um, uh, I'm a tequila guy, bro. Tequila, I do that. So you're not like rolling up before you go to bed or anything. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll hit a I, bro. Listen, my boy Ron White brought some. Uh, Saw you and him fishing. Yeah, that's my dog. I was Jelly like, Roll posties, my boy. I saw that post. Um, he me, said he looked like a retarded turtle or something. I forget. I forget what I told Posty. That's my dog, though. Shout out to Post Malone. Retired turtle trainer. Oh, or I something say he like looked that. like an unemployed crocodile hunter. The only time I ever hung out with Post Malone, pretty much, was at the Porn Awards. Mm. At the Porn Convention, rather. He's so dope to be around. There's a photo of us together. I know. He's Damn. so he's Why so, so much good. Gas? Yeah, what the fuck? He's so good. His music is amazing. Mm -hmm. I've, like, re-become a big Post Malone fan the last year. I went to his concert with him, bro, and uh, he had me backstage. And like it was so live, and I was like, bro, I was like, I want to go experience this from the audience. And so, he, you ever seen his security guards? Not in God recent damn, times. They look superhuman. The big ass. Last time remotes. I was around them, no security guards. How long ago was that? 2017, 2018. Yeah, 2017. He got these gigantic ass Samoans, bro. They're huge. Really? And, um, and uh, yeah, so I went to go experience the show, bro, and it was some of the most electric shit I've ever seen. Really, it was crazy. Was it just the music and the performance, or was it the crowd of like you can, tens of thousands of normies enjoying themselves? Yeah, like twenty thousand people or fifteen thousand, and they're all singing his shit. Even grown men, normal ass people. Like that's the power of just good music, right? Because you go to a rap show, it's like. If you're initiated into this cult, it's very enjoyable. But realistically, this is something that normal people just don't get into. Yeah. The best rap shows I've seen, uh, Kanye West tops mm -hmm. everybody. And then uh, back when uh, it was just so electric, when Drake and Future on tour. I like how you have to go with like the right coded performers, Post Malone mean? and Kanye. What do you mean? Well, every Republican, their favorite rapper is Kanye. I was a Kanye fan before I was a Republican. I was a Kanye fan when he was on the Blueprint 2, when he had a feature on some random Jay-Z song, and yeah. he's been going hard ever since. Ever but, since he was making beats. Yeah, yeah. But it's like when I interviewed Nick Fuentes, he told me all about how much he loved Kanye, and mm -hmm. it was like kind of his way of saying, like, look, I do like some black shit, just not most of it. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I mean. That's funny as hell. Basically. Yeah. Um. You listen to the the new Kanye album? Yeah, Vultures. I listened to it while I was on mushrooms. Actually, Damn, maybe I'm doing too much of this. That was like the two times <laughs> I've done it, but that was like I felt like I enjoyed the the Kanye album a lot more because I of the mushrooms. All of his album, even the gospel album. Yeah, yeah. But if you like, if you like his shit now, it's kind of like a totally different thing because it's, yeah, it's leveling up. You have to like go against the the tide. What do you mean? Because so many people, if you say that you like Kanye's current output, are going to basically take that as you saying that you are really in favor of like. Well, I mean, um, what was the album whatever. he dropped? Uh, and I had to go listen to it again. The gospel one was. Oh, very hey, lost oh me. look, look who fucking. It's been a little spotty since then. Here he is. Hopefully he answers. He, I just missed his call. How did I not see that? Who? Andy. What's up? Bang, bang. What up, baby? Milanakis. What up, Adam? How you living, bro? Good. We're just talking about you. Hell yeah, brother. I'm in Austin, <coughs> Texas. Yeehaw, homie. Oh, you transitioned as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. That's the opposite of Austin, Texas. No, people be transitioning out there, too. No, you guys are all transplants. I don't live here. Well, uh, I'm thinking about moving here. Yeah, you seem like you do pretty well out there. I lived in Austin for a few months. It's amazing. I lived here for a year during the pandemic. And so, like, you know, I've been traveling, doing that IRL shit. I've seen you when I started that shit like 70 years ago. Oh, yeah. But, like, because I travel so much, when I'm home in New York, I'm paying, like, a few K for, like, a fucking box. And I don't really want to go out and about all the fucking time in New York, you know? Mm. So if I'm just going to be a homebody, why not have a big fucking house for the same price? No, like, I feel you, man. I don't even care about the location. Like, I have a lot of friends in Austin, the comedy scene, obviously. David knows his fucking bustling out there. But just for the fact alone that, like, in the suburbs, I could get a fucking five-bedroom house 
for the same price as a small apartment in Manhattan. You know what I mean? Totally. I mean, you, if you live in L.A. or New York and you don't have a very specific reason to be there, people these days look at you like, what the fuck are well, you yeah, doing? Why are you why, just here? Why? Yeah. Like, just to have a normal yeah, job, exactly. you know? Yeah, I mean, the only thing is my family, but fuck my family, right? <laughs> it's you, like you that? Stupid. You stupid, bro. <laughs> All right, bro. Love you, Andy. Uh, see you too, don't All right, yeah. uh, I talk, I'm talking to Cam. I'm going to kill Tony to watch the show on Monday. Mm -hmm. All right, solid. Yeah. Meow. He ends up calling meow. I feel like when I went on Kill Tony is when I realized how not funny I was. Um, your podcast funny, but not Kill Tony funny. Yeah. You, you don't you don't have no disrespect the wit to keep up with oh, that show. Totally agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're a podcast. You're you're kind of you're kind of one dimensional, Adam. You don't you don't show many emotions mm -hmm. in your in your interview and uh but that's what makes you you. You know what I'm saying? We don't we we watch it because you're one dimensional. I think I'm a good interviewer. I don't think I'm a great comedian, but I'm sitting there with fucking Red Band, who is the funniest motherfucker. Yeah, he's Tony. A, he's a man child. Unbelievably <laughs> funny. Yeah. And like until you're sitting there on stage next to them and listening to the shit that they come up with off the top of your head, you really don't know how not funny you are. Right. Until you're kind of like side by side. Like I could kind of fit in with those guys on a podcast because it's just everybody's right. just throwing shit at the right. wall. But in that moment, seeing the shit that they come up with to just dig into the souls of the people that just got up there. Mm -hmm. I was amazed. And also, I don't think it helped that we smoked like eight blunts in the back room before we went out there. And I was like, in that moment, like, oh, the weed is really not helping my chances of saying anything You should anything come do funny. it in Austin, bro, when we fish and all I'll go, that. Well, no, they're going to they're gonna turn on me. Who? I don't know. Somebody's going to start making fun of me. I'm going to be like, oh, I got to get out of here. Probably be me. No, I'll, uh, I'll go with you. Yeah, but I'm going to yeah. like sit like right next to him. I'll put my arm around you. No. Nah. I'm, like, I'm with him. We ain't gay to play. Gay to pay, or whatever it's called, pay to gay. Well, sure. I don't know what it's called. Uh, I'm definitely going to, because I'm supposed to do a Texas trip in general. All right. Well, but are you home for, like, large spans of time, or are you just on the road all the time? I'm on the road a lot, but uh, let me know, and then I'll, I'll put it in my schedule. Are you keeping Austin weird, or are you making it less weird? Um, That's the thing, bro. Like, uh, 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 Austin liberal is still a California conservative. Mm. Like they 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 still believe in guns. They don't really fuck with that homosexuality shit. Mm. They just you know have certain picks that they take from you know the liberal shit. But they're still gun toting motherfuckers. Believe mm. me. Because my kid is in like a really nice preschool soon will be in like you know private schools and shit like that i've yet to encounter any of the parents who have said any like weird woke shit to me but i can imagine it coming at some point yeah because what they say go woke, go broke yeah. you know and i would say from a money standpoint most wealthy people in california are going to be republicans i think they have to like at least present as liberals to keep their jobs Liber yeah, liberal viewpoints, dude. It's kind of like the thing we were talking about with the fat girls. Like, you have to just say it. Like, I've been out mm -hmm. with a girl before, a pretty girl, and she just walked up to a random fat girl. And she's like, you are so beautiful. Oh, they love doing that. And, oh and, I, and I asked her, I was like, why did you do that? And she was like, she needs it. And I was like, do you think she's beautiful? She's like, no, but it's nice to tell her that. I'm like, what? Wow. That makes no sense. That's evil. Yeah. That's like the hottest dude in the room walking up to you and being like, man, you got a great body. <laughs> All right. Like, bro, I beat your ass, nigga, because now you fucking with my mental. Yeah. <laughs> now you playing me. How'd you get so tight with Danny Brown that he did the, he made a song for the intro to your comedy special? Man, Danny Brown, a real dude. Shout out to Danny Brown. That's my dog, bro. I love Danny Brown. Me and him are close and cool. And uh, Kill Tony, uh, Rogan. Bro, Danny Brown is funny mm. as hell. Right. Yeah. He's sober now. Uh, congrats on that, buddy. He came to see my show uh, at Cap City right when he got out of the sober living or whatever the fuck it was. Oh, he went to rehab. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, dude, uh, we just got tight through comedy. I remember, like, 2017, I was in Vegas, and Danny Brown— That's a wild boy. —invited me to his hotel room, and he basically described it as, like, yo, you and your girl should pull up. I got, like, some bitches over here. I got a bunch of Coke and Molly. Come through. <laughs> and we didn't. I don't think didn't. that wild anymore. Yeah, I don't think he does that anymore. But, like, I, I said no because I had to go to a sex club. Mm. 
in like the sex club, I ended up seeing like a gay dude get fucked in the ass oh, by, God, a, by right. like a chick with a strap on. Right, keep that to yourself. Like as like a thing at the sex club. And you like the, you was like, I'm next. I, I, I feel like maybe I should have gone and done Molly with Danny Brown instead. <laughs> Especially if he's not doing it anymore. Hey, Adam, Adam, I, I come to my hotel. <laughs> I got the bitches. <laughs> I never even met him. But before that, like, I had that opportunity. I didn't take it. I probably should have. Yeah, Danny's, he's a good person to be around. Yeah, he's hilarious. I know how to be around all that shit and not indulge. You just don't? No. Nah. Not even a little bit? Mm. You don't even taste the Coke? Mm -mm. Why not? It's not my thing, bro. But you don't even know. Nah, I know it's not my thing. I've, you, seen, I've you, seen what it, it has done to people. Right. And with the fentanyl nowadays, like, why even risk it? But you drink, right? A little bit. Drunk people can be horrible to observe. I don't get drunk. Mm. I don't drink to get drunk. I, I might get drunk three times a year, but I don't drink to get drunk. It's called self-control. But you take a couple shots? I'll I'll have a drink before I go on stage and probably take a drink with me on stage. And if I got a second show, probably have a drink on that show. But I'm, I'm not out here getting belligerent drunk. Like, uh, you know, that's, you don't want to be that you gotta You got to maintain professionalism. And, yeah. Yeah, it's been a long time since I got, like, shit face drunk. Yeah, I don't, I don't even like that. The next day, I'm in my 30s, bro. Like, the next day... Like that, like I don't want that. I like to get up and be able to do what I need to do, and you know, I can confirm at forty that the hangover is not worth it. Yeah, <laughs> Ugh. no matter how much hair transplants you get, you're still forty. How's it look? It's like now the hair, it's all kind of like blending together. Oh, see, look, it at ain't. That man, hair. Come on, Ugh. bro, what's wrong with you? Well, you're farting. I mean, but it don't stink. Have you smelled it? What if I just jerked off? <laughs> no, don't do that, bro. <laughs> I mean, but if you could fart, I could beat off. No. You're crazy. <laughs> You're a crazy guy. But I'm just trying to think of like what are the things that people don't do on podcasts that they could potentially do? Queef, fart, <laughs> queef. You, know, you just take a shit. Mm, all right, that's nasty. What if we do a podcast? Okay, here we go. We do a podcast. We eat like really offensive amounts of food. We all wear adult diapers, and then we take an oath that we will piss and shit in our own diapers until someone springs a leak. Uh, bro, you had to pay me a shit ton of money. Yeah, that's disgusting. Yeah, like for me to dehumanize myself like that. Yeah, yeah. When's the last time you had to clean a little kid diaper? My kid is nine and four, so it's been a couple of years. Yeah, it's the worst. Yeah, the worst thing ever. I'd be so ready for them to get. And now my four year old, she'll have an accident. Yes, that's what again. I was thinking. Now yeah. you get to experience it once in a blue moon, yeah. and it's horrible. Yeah. But it's normally pee, and I'm like, take that off yourself. <laughs> take that shit off. You did it. Take it off. I put my kid to sleep with the diaper, and then she uses it as an excuse. She breaks out of her room, runs into the room, and says, Dada, I peed in my diaper. And I'm like, that's what it's fucking there for. Right. But she's using it as an excuse, saying, no, I, I need to change the diaper before I'll go to sleep. My mom's such an enabler, bro. Whenever my four-year-old's at my mom's house, she just recently turned four, but she's always getting my mom to put on a pull-up. I'm mm -hmm. like... What are we doing? Yeah. Are you being lazy? Yeah. <laughs> but you see that with other people, how they will like take exactly as much as they can from other people. Yeah. And if they know that they can't get that from you, they'll get it from whoever yeah. they can't my, get it My from. daughter is very intelligent. Yeah. She goes to one of those private school, preschools like your daughter. Uh-huh. Yeah. At four, four is still preschool? Yeah. And then what? She just turned four. Kindergarten soon? Yeah. Um, she's probably about to uh, go straight into kinder, yeah. And did you do like a CRT check? She on had to the take. School? She had to take that. Uh, so the school that she's about to start going to, um, her she had to go take a test and all this shit. And her mom's like, "Look, everybody who graduates here does this." And I'm like, "God damn, man, this shit expensive." Are you playing like the reindeer games of like having to get your kid into like the good private school? Yeah. So therefore, you have to like go to different like little gatherings and yeah. you got to like write a letter and you got to get a recommendation. And there's all this like judging of yeah. the intelligence of this child, but it clearly has nothing to do with really judging the kid. It's more about them judging you. Yeah, because my, uh, my, my daughter's mom was upset because I was in Miami recently and I was supposed to. Uh, I think we got in. Did we get in late? Yeah, we got in late. I was supposed to. Go, they they want the parent interview, but you know she told me like, her daddy's a touring entertainer and his flight got delayed or something like that. Mm. So yeah. So you had actually like shaped your itinerary to make it so you could go to this. Yeah. Like you you yeah. thought it was important enough. Yeah. Well, it was important to my. I try to be a good father. You know, I'm not with either one of my daughter's moms. 
And I try to be there for things like that when they ask if it's feasible. Why can't you make it work with the, the daughter's moms? If you're a real conservative, you're supposed to stick it out. Uh, so the first one, we were just really, really young. Mm. And uh, my uh, recent, um, she, like when I started, like, you know, getting more successful and famous, she didn't, we didn't see eye to eye anymore. Mm. It was better when I was, had lesser money. She she wasn't okay with you getting random pussy side quests on the road? Um, I think at one point, but we were already like done and I was already seeing other people. I think at one point she was like, listen, let's just live together and you can do whatever you want. Just don't bring me nothing. Mm. She had like broke down. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Really? <laughs> yeah. So you got that final offer <laughs> of like, yeah, you can fuck whoever you want. Yeah. So she was like, let's stop playing. Like, let's. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, no, like really me bringing you this chlamydia to try out. This no, is part of it. The thing is, we, we had been living together for like six years, you mm. know, and we had a baby during the pandemic. And, you know, just the stress of that. Mm. mixed with like me like shit I'm not performing but I took care of us the whole pandemic you know with the shit I had saved and then we just reached like a final breaking point you know she had postpartum and she told me to move out and that was the first time I had freedom in like like I said six seven years mm. so when I got on my own and I was like oh what <laughs> what what it's like a thing where you start to believe in the relationship that you could never possibly be happy outside of the relationship. Mm. And then once you get a little taste of it, you start to be like, oh, wait, like I am a resourceful it human was, being. I can do this. I was like, there's no way I can go back. Like once I, I moved to WeHo and then it was like, yo, no, I'm able to walk to all this stuff. You moved to the gayest part of the country. <laughs> hey, bro. Just a coincidence. I ain't gay, but there's plenty of girls over there. i tell you that. Really? Oh, yeah, plenty. And as a non-gay, you can just kind of soak it up? Yeah, yeah. Like, bro, girls feel safe over there, so if they meet you, their guard is down. Mm. It's crazy. Like, you go to other parts of L.A. and their guard is up, but over there they're, like, all friendly. Mm. And then you start talking and, you're, and, you know, like, oh, I live, you know, a block away. Oh, really? Every once in a while, I have to drive through these areas and the other day I was driving through there on a Sunday afternoon uh, and I just see a dude a black dude with booty shorts on and yeah. he's wearing a tank top and it says F-A-G-G-O-T <laughs> I didn't really get to like see there might have been like small text above and below it that made it like a wittier t-shirt but see, I was like this is where I need to be that's the thing uh, so where I was at it was a side street so I was in between Sunset and Santa Monica, and my side street was calm. A lot of my neighbors were gay, but they were they they looked out. Mm. They were like, David, we saw you know you had packages stacking up, so we figured you were out of town and we put them in our house. But here you go, mm. shit like that. And like for me to see that type of stuff, you saw, I would have to go down to Santa Monica and then go right. Mm. You know, um, I got into a couple of. Uh, I guess you know fights. Nah, you were brawling with the gays. No, it was a it w it wasn't a gay. It was a tranny. Oh, that was in uh, uh, Starbucks. Male uh, to female. Yeah, but female to male. You you gotta leave them alone. You gotta turn yeah. down that fit. Male to female. Okay. So uh, we were in Starbucks because I used to live like two blocks from the Starbucks on Santa Monica, and uh, somebody behind me said, "Excuse me, my order's ready." And I said. <laughs> And I said, uh, I didn't see the person. They were behind me. <laughs> right. And so naturally I said, my bad, bro. Like just on some like, my bad, bro. Like, go ahead. oh, then I said, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, you see that. And it's like, oh, shit. And they're like, you know, did you misgender me and all that type of shit? And I'm like, look, like you can put a fucking paint job on a fucking Toyota, but it's still a fucking Toyota. You can put rims on it, and we still know that's a fucking Toyota. Did you actually think to say that in the moment? Yeah, we were arguing. Oh. I was like, I was like, just because you're in disguise, it doesn't <laughs> make you a fucking woman. Like, look how you sounded to where I didn't see you and said, "My bad, bro." Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I don't know what point you're trying to prove right here. I feel like in an area like that, that's got to be kind of weird because I feel like a lot of the gay dudes are just as skeptical about the trans people as you are. Yeah. So. <laughs> So, bro, here's the crazy part, right? Uh, you befriend a lot of gay people living over there, and a lot of gay people are conservative as fuck. Mm. They don't like how 
being gay is now. And they're like, no, we hate that fag shit. We hate that tranny shit, David. Like, that's why we love your comedy. Mm. And I'm like, oh, this is an interesting perspective. If uh, you're just some dude who's been gay for 20 years, and then you see, like, all these, like, random Karens, white women, just deciding that they are really concerned with their pronouns, I think a lot of, like, real deal gay people who don't have anything to prove, they just want to live their life. And be gay. And fuck buttholes. Yeah. They're just like, what the fuck? All this other shit is retarded. Like, imagine you've had HIV for 20 years, and now all of a sudden it's glamorized. You're like, what the fuck? Like, this isn't cool. Like, I've even had conversations with a lot of trans people who think that all the radical trans ideology is ridiculous. It is. And they just themselves want to live their life as a trans, as a woman, whatever, kind of just want to be left alone in yeah. their own little insular community. And they just see all this other shit, and they're just kind of like, what are you doing? And here's my thing about all that shit. Like, Listen, I really, at the end of the day, don't give a fuck what you do. Right. But don't come over here confusing people. Mm. I can't keep up with that shit. I can't keep up with none of that shit. I don't, like, if I think you're a man, I'm going to call you a man. If I think you're a woman, I'm going to call you a woman. Mm. Like, if you're trying to be a woman and I'm still calling you a man, do a better fucking job. What do you know about George Michael? George Michael, who's that? He's a singer. Singer, right? So yeah. there was this group, Wham, that he was in, yeah. and it was like the most ridiculous pop group ever, right? And I watched a documentary on Netflix about them the other day, and George Michael's like gay as fuck the whole time. This band is huge, and they have like all little girl fans. It's like little 15, 16 year old girls screaming, losing their fucking minds at their shows and shit, right? And like he ends up coming out as gay because as soon as I get done watching the documentary, I got to go on YouTube and watch the video of him coming out. But then there's this other video that really stood out to me. Mm -hmm. 2006. He gets he, followed by the paparazzi. This guy's uh -huh. like extremely famous. Uh -huh. He gets followed by the paparazzi while he's cruising, a.k.a. the thing where gay dudes will go out in public in their cars to like different areas and sort of like just meet up with each other and then like fuck <laughs> in the car. What? It's called cruising. This is like a real thing in gay culture. And like, Where does this happen at? In most major cities, I don't know if it still really happens because I think now it's just gone to the dating the, apps the, and everything. Apps, yeah. But in 2006, George Michael does a fucking radio or a, an interview on TV where basically the paparazzi had followed him while he was out cruising, aka indiscriminately fucking random dudes <laughs> in the park. This is crazy. And he's like emotionally going off to the news person, the camera, explaining how they need to leave him the fuck alone so he can just cruise in peace. Yeah, let him do his. Like, if, if, if yeah, do it. It's just know. like 2006 was a weird year for this because I feel like now no famous person would have the ex expectation of privacy while right. they do such delinquent right. behavior. Yeah, I just showed you a video of you that my brother took. Right, exactly. <laughs> I cannot. I'm still confused by that. But like 10 years before that. There would have been no paparazzi taking pictures of you doing this weird activity or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's, it's just the most surreal thing to watch him like going off to the camera about how he should be able to do this. And the reason why I've always been intrigued by the cruising thing is because I actually grew up near this park that was kind of like the park where gay dudes from my neighborhood would go to fuck each other. And then once the internet came out, the local newspaper ended up realizing it because there was like websites about like, where do you go if you're a gay dude and you want to fuck people in your car? And so I, the, the newspaper was like, <laughs> Greeley Park, Greeley Park is the gay hangout spot. And I'm a kid realizing like, oh, like, I, cause I found a porno magazine there before. One time I fucking found a dildo in a bag, <laughs> in a brown bag. I had seen, you know, just seen a lot of like dudes parked there yeah. just seeming like they were up to no good. And then finally they put this article in the newspaper and I realized that's what those dudes were doing. Wow. In their cars. Amazing. You should get Jesse Lee Peterson on here too. Oh my God. He used to ask me to go on his show all the time. Why don't you? Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> He's just, I mean, I don't know. I just... he, inter he interviewed me uh, last year or the year before. <laughs> And he was like, you, 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 you're one of the only young people I know with common sense. I was like, thank you, man. I don't think he would say something like that to me. I think he would probably Well, make first it, of all, he'd be, bro, he would pick He's going to talk about the dude. He, bro, yes. he would pick you apart. I know. So would you be <laughs> homosexual? 
Are you homosexual? <laughs> <laughs> I love JLP, bro. Yo, but I was saying no to him before all that shit. So I don't know what the fuck he would have been talking you should to me bring about him on before here. that. Oh. Adam, that will do. Imagine the clips. Like, how did he even get into this position? Bro, did you I see have so many questions? Did you see him on Tom Segura's uh, podcast where he was talking about buying a plantation and putting black people back on it? He said that? <laughs> yeah, it's oh so funny. God. It's fu- bro, it's funny as fuck. And I don't know how why people get a fit. It's like just laugh at it. I've seen him in Destiny. You go watch that. He's cause he's asking him the whole time about because Destiny is in like an open relationship where he or he's not anymore, but he was with this girl where like he would let her fuck other dudes. Mm-hmm. And he would go fuck other girls. And Jesse Lee Peterson's hammering him the whole time about it. Amazing. It's just <laughs> unreal. Amazing. Maybe I should do that. Yeah, you should get him on here. Bro. Honestly, I don't know if I'm ready for the smoke though. From who? Jesse. Papa Shroom. I don't know anything about him. Bro, go watch his YouTube. I need to like He's get a preacher. On him. He's a preacher. Have they they tried to put some gay shit on him, right? Yeah, that's what they tried to say. That's some stuff, yeah. Maybe I should become an expert in that. So and, you can have some And then he can interview with? me and I'll just hit him with the gay shit over yeah. there. But what he's other questions? I'm interested to see what other questions you got. I don't even know if I really have anything left. It was pretty Pretty beef. And just right to brief. check out the David Lucas LLC. That's what? The right. LLC? Yeah, right to check out to my LLC. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't take no cash out. You just decided, like, fuck, I should be getting paid for this. That's what the girl told me. This was so, so revealing. You want me to show you the text message? Yeah, show me. Bro, it's right there. That's a comedian. The comedians don't get paid for podcasts. Rappers all want to get paid for podcasts now. Oh, we, we get paid for podcasts. Somebody, Somebody lied to you. Do they really? Yeah. If I'm doing a lesser podcast, yeah. So the smaller ones have to pay these days. I mean, it's just like I'm helping you. Like, just throw me something for my, you know. No, yeah, saying? something makes sense for sure. But so normally, like, it's a it's, it's a nice. I feel like it's slowly becoming like helping people out with travel is becoming. I mean, here's the norm. my thing, bro. My podcast is doing it's doing pretty good for mm-hmm. only have been around for a year, and you know, once we're getting deals to where we're making a hundred grand or whatever a, a month. I'll be more than happy to pay my guests, you know, five hundred to a thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like once it becomes a regular thing, yeah, you know, like mm-hmm. the first one, it makes more sense to me that there's no cash exchanging hands. But then yeah. once it becomes a regular thing, it's almost like you have a show together. Yeah, you probably give me a show. You get it. yeah. I mean, it also it depends on like how much you're perceived to be like earning from it. How would me and Flacco do on If you like thought that? that I was making $100,000 from this podcast, you being like, well, Adam, shit. I didn't say that. Giving me 10000 would be prudent, right? I didn't say that. No, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Like, if you if you really thought I was making, like in the reality of the situations, like I'll probably make like a couple thousand dollars. Should I fake choke you so we can go viral? Like jump across the table? Ugh, but then it's just so gay. Like, Ask the black girl question again. Like, Did I tell you not to answer <laughs> that shit again, time. motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be so good though, to like just do that for the thumbnail. Right. People do that though. I've had people like kind of like propose it, be like, oh, like you should walk off. And then I like did it for like two seconds, and then they actually titled it that way, and was like Adam Twenty Two walks off the podcast. Wow! And they sure enough had like just the right amount of footage of me kind of like walking away from the table to be like he walked off. How do you think me and Flacco were doing the pot? Um, God, I mean his his views are viewed as like very controversial within the hip hop space because he's. Not necessarily uh, going along with the is black he, agenda. I didn't even get to speak to him that long. He dipped. Is he? Uh, is he like Haitian? He is from Liberia. Liberia. Okay. Which, if you've never seen it, you should watch the Vice documentary about General Butt Naked from Liberia. Oh, General Butt Naked. Yes. He, he go to he, ba- he get high and then go to battle naked as fuck. He was probably high for sure. Yeah, he was yeah. killing babies. And, yeah, he was. Uh, he was. He used to get high on something. Flacco claims General Butt Naked was the the pastor at his church. When he was a little kid, I could see that because, like, think but he of, left by three. So the idea that he remembers this is dubious. But I, I mean, think about this, bro. When you when you talk about cults, right? So if he was a cult leader, it just say he went to a church that was very cultish. So if you think about a cult, right? If you're a part of my cult, I can convince you that whatever I'm doing is good. I can tell you that I'm only killing babies out of wedlock to keep 
our community peer. Well, but they were saying that you have to kill a baby before you go to battle so you can eat the baby so that you can basically be invincible. And I think that's why General Butt Naked was butt naked while he was in battle as well. He Because nobody the, wants to wrestle with him. Well, I think he thought the bullets wouldn't hit him if he was naked. I mean, Adam, if me and you got to the fight right now, you stripped down, I'd be like, bro, you're tripping. I'd be like, come on, man. Put that shit up. I'm, I'm I'll not, take my shirt off. No, if you took everything off. I'm that guy. If I get in a fight in public, I'm taking my shirt off. You got to. You're not going to stretch my shit out. Yeah, especially. Yeah. you. you yeah. Because that the most embarrassing thing is not even the fight. It's walking around how with you a stretched look, out yeah. shirt after. How you look after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because yeah. people. And, pe- and the crazy part about it is most people who fight don't know how to fight. So they're doing a lot of grabbing. A lot of yelling. Yeah. A lot of screaming the N-word. Yeah, I'm not I'm not fighting. I'm, I'm, I like the white dudes who start saying the N-word during the fight or like leading up to the fight and then stop immediately after and <laughs> then before. But during the fight, like leading up to the fight, they're n in it. And nobody even challenges it because they understand right. that is the language of combat. Do you feel like, um, we were talking about racism, do you feel like a lot of stuff is blown out of proportion with racism? Like take, for instance... Uh, you saw the video where the, where the two girls got into a fight and the black chick banged the white girl's head. And, and killed t- her, right? I don't know if she killed her, but she or she's in the hospital. She, right, she yeah. had a seizure. So it's not a big deal, right? And I saw a lot of people pointing out that this will never get attention from the mainstream media. No, but, but if it was a black girl getting the same exact situation from white girls, you know exactly how Why is that? It's called race baiting. Yeah, it mirrors the experience of, that we all assume that black people have it's, in this country. I guess it's like the uh, it's like the um, the uh, the white no hold up what was it it was it was the black officers that killed the white guy. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Can't remember. Timmy something. Yeah. Yeah. But it if BLM is really against police brutality or whatever. Y'all's fake motto is why did this have no media attention? Like me and Flacco were talking about that. Like the outrage, the selective outrage from BLM is what drives me through the wall. Mm. Because if you want to stop police brutality, I talked about this on Willie D's podcast. We have, and you can probably agree. You you interview a lot of rappers. Would you say that a lot of people that look like me have an anti-authority issue? Mm, yeah. For sure, I hear rappers or or people in this space describe their interactions with police sometimes, and I'm like, oh, why did you do that? (laughs) Like, that is 100% not how you're supposed to act with a cop. If you didn't know me, if you didn't know me, and I just had on my regular clothes, could Mm -hmm. I potentially look like a rapper with my hand tattoos and neck tattoos? Sure. I get put over by, I've been put over by the cops many times. Mm -hmm. And like I was saying on the Willie D podcast, my hands are on the steering wheel and my radio's down, Mm -hmm. and my windows are rolled down. So I think... Like it, and people say it's fucked up or whatever that we have to do that, but the goal is to get home at the end of the day. I do the same thing. I just act as as orderly as possible. My whole objective here is to make the cop feel comfortable, show him I'm not a threat. But I also don't have a criminal record, and I feel like any time a cop has been acting weird to me or acting like they're suspicious of me, as soon as they see no criminal record, they're like, oh, whatever. If you made it to 40 and you're covered in tattoos and you don't have a criminal record... You're probably you're amazing. Probably not a threat. You're a unicorn. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, bro. But the anti <laughs> there's there's so many things BLM could do to really uh, help their image instead of just laundering and money. Yeah, and stealing money and paying family members seven hundred thousand dollars. You know, there was this moment during the George Floyd thing though, where it felt like everyone was kind of like in agreement that there was something very wrong about this video. And it feels like we would never be able to get to that sort of conclusion as a culture going forward because shit is dramatically more politicized and and polarized than it ever was before. Well, first of all, if we're talking about the video, if if I'm his family or his friend or his kids, I'd have been mad the way it was shared. Like, I don't think we should be desensitized to death. That's not natural. We shouldn't see a person take their last breaths, regardless of their criminal background. We shouldn't see a person take their last breath unless, you know, it was something like, you know, they, they kill my mom or something like that. And I probably would go to a death chamber. Thing. Well, I mean, they would say that nobody would have 
been aware of it nobody would have cared nobody would, like when there was just a vague description of it out there in the media nobody gave a shit once yeah, the video came out is what lit I think the, it, I think the it country happened, on fire I think it happened on like Memorial Day and, and then the country got lit a fire that weekend mm. I think it was Friday right Friday, if I'm not mistaken. I remember when I first heard Candace Owens talking about how Derek Chauvin didn't kill him and it was a drug overdose and all this shit. It felt like an extreme conspiracy theory, but I've seen a lot more reputable people engaging with this idea since. Right, right. Yeah, I mean... You, you know, haven't really bothered to dig too deep into it, given um, your recent controversy? No, not really. I Like, like I said, man, I talked to his family. I um, uh, know a lot of them guys down there in Houston, and I just, for the sake of them, because I know them, I just kind of left it alone. And, you know, like, people still come to shows and be like, do that George Floyd joke. <laughs> and it's like... <sighs> you feel like you got to leave it alone now? And make it better? Step it up? Make mm. it more interesting if you are going to do stuff like that? Yeah, because the thing is, if somebody, like I said, bro, they heard a rant. Right. They didn't hear the joke. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like if the world would have heard my actual written out joke, it wouldn't have been as bad. But do you feel like as a comic that, you know, you're kind of thinking now, like, what is my next special going to be? Well, I don't stray away from any topic. If I feel I want to talk about that topic, I'm like, this hasn't changed my viewpoint on doing that joke or I don't regret doing that joke. You know what I'm saying? Like, like when I talked to his family, they were hurt. They said they were hurt. So it's like, all right, well, well, here's the thing. When I made the video, it was for y'all. I didn't apologize for the joke. I made that very clear. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody's going to tell me what I can and can't talk about. Mm. And they're like, well, make jokes about the Holocaust. Well, first, I would have to, it would have to be relatable to me. Mm. And it would have to, like, speak to me because I want to talk about it. Like, just telling me to make a joke is like, it'll probably be terrible because you're telling me to just make that joke. And it's like when it comes, they're like, where are your white jokes at? I'm like, obviously, you have never seen me. Mm. Obviously, you have never seen anything outside of this clip if you're saying joke about white people. <laughs> because if you watch Kill Tony, I think that's pretty much all I did for four years. Also, I've definitely heard comics make Holocaust jokes. They do. Yeah. They do. Nothing's off the table. Nothing's off the table. You know I mean, what I'm maybe some stuff, but for sure, like. Some shit that happened in a war 80 years ago. Yeah. I think it's it's on the table for jokes. Yeah. Yeah, it it's, is. It's got to be funny. Make it great. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It has to be great. Standard is higher. To the, like, bro, I love a good racist joke. Whether it's against black people. Is it good? Is it good? That's all I, I just wanted to be. I caught a second hand high from you. Mm. Yeah, I know. For sure, I'm high too. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, you're good. <laughs> Feels good. <laughs> um... Who's the most famous person in your phone? In my phone? Yeah. Fuck, I don't know. Me? me Amber know. Rose. Really? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Amber's she, dope. She, I texted her like today, so that just came to mind. What should we be talking about? I was trying to get her to do a sexy photo shoot with my wife. Mm. What for, Amber for do For Mother's now? Day. What Amber do now? She was doing OnlyFans, but now she's, I don't even know. Bro, only problem. She got rich I, baby daddies, so that's part of the puzzle. Two of them? Well, Wiz Khalifa, and then I don't know how rich the other dude is, but he's dating Cher now, so. Oh, that boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro, I wonder how weird that would be, like, if I dated Amber Rose and I know her baby daddy make more money than me. Yeah, and you just got to see Wiz Khalifa. And just, <laughs> but, but he's, like, the ultimate because he's just, like, the coolest dude. He yeah. seems like he'd be so easy to get along with. But, even, but it's different when you, like, when there's a kid involved and mm -hmm. you're that boyfriend. You know what I'm saying? What if, the, like, your girl got a kid with Quando Rondo? Do it, but that's like gonna be kind of weird when you got to see him around, right? Like, man, I, I he probably had beef with me just because he'd be like, man, I hate that nigga. <laughs> yeah, exactly. hate that nigga. Hate don't be <laughs> fucking his baby mama. Hate that nigga. Man, fuck that old pussy ass comedian ass fat ass nigga. <laughs> hey, just imagine it'd be like, yeah, I, we you're have, gonna get into it sooner we, or later. Yeah. But I'm not really a get into it type person. And he got little Tim with him. So, like, if you get into it, like, he's going to kill you. And then that's going to be kind of a sad story. Yeah. I mean, we wouldn't get into it because I'm not even that type of person to get into it. Mm. I'm not even to get into it. I, I talk and then it's like, you're not threatening me and my kids, bro. Like, if, if something came with my kid, then that's a totally different monster. If you meet a girl mm -hmm. and then you find out she's got a kid with Quando Rondo, 
does that make her more or less desirable to you? I feel like I don't hang out at the places or be at places to meet a girl that has a baby with Quando Rondo. I don't feel like we would even be at the same anything. What if she got a baby with Tony Hinchcliffe? Uh, uh, just <laughs> off of GP, I wouldn't fuck with her. Really? Yeah. I'm that It's too of, close to home. Yeah. I had that happen before. I went on a date with a girl, and she was like, you know who my ex is? And I was like, no, who is your ex? And then she told me. And she's like, yeah, I thought you knew. I was like, bitch, no, I, I'm not that type of dude. No, I didn't know. I was like, this date is over. And it was someone you knew, like your friend? Or? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, that is awkward as fuck. <laughs> and she's like, and, and it was almost like she said it to where she was like, I thought you did this because you knew. Mm. Yeah. Because apparently, because she told me this whole story about how some she. Some get back pussy? Yeah. That's some good shit. Yeah, probably is, though. Wow. <laughs> That's like an amazing feeling. Yeah. I had an ex girlfriend, and then we break up. She moves and gets an apartment with like three other girls. And as the year of their lease goes by, two of the friends slowly, I guess through her complaining about me constantly, start to get like really attracted to me and end up hitting me up and end up fucking two of the girls that she lived with. And she never found out. She know now? Nah. How many chicks you fuck with that stayed in an apartment with two other girls? Well, well LA, LA that's, that's, that, that happens all the time. If that girl is paying attention to my podcast career still, she deserves to know. This was like 20 years ago. Oh. So, I mean... I can't even remember the names of anyone involved besides the ex-girlfriend. How much did you make it doing BMX? Not a lot. Really? That's a real labor of love right there. Yeah. You're a tall ass nigga to do BMX. Oh, yeah. I sucked. <laughs> and I got all kinds of injuries that when I think back on it, I'm like, maybe you should have just not done that. Like yeah. Maybe you could have found something else to do with yourself. Yeah. yeah. Like my body type was just not suited to it. Yeah. You, you're doing your thing now, bro. How long has podcast been up and running? Like eight years. Yeah. What'd you do before that? BMX. Oh, that was it? So yeah. eight years ago you were? Well, I ran on a BMX website. That was like my main thing. And the bike shop. Yep. Yeah, bro. I swear I remember you. Yeah. Like King Eddie's. Because yeah. we were doing these huge BMX street rides. There's all these crazy videos on YouTube of us with like 500 people just like mobbing through downtown. And there's one of them. It was Halloween and I was wearing an Eminem costume. Let me see how much you remember downtown. Do you remember the pirate dude? Yeah, I do. I think I do remember a pirate dude. Yeah. And all the bars would let him in. Yeah. 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 You yeah. remember OG Pancake? What he looked like? In the wheelchair? Mm, no, nah, it's just this one crazy ass dude. That, actually, I guess you wouldn't know him. I remember there was a dude who would just pour oil on the ground and then just dance and just like shred it up, like <sighs> using the oil to slide his feet on the ground. Do you remember the crazy dude who used to ride his bike in traffic, like waving the flag? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bro, downtown, <laughs> yeah. we all know the same people. Downtown was crazy. <laughs> we all know the same bums. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, they And all, this is before Software Underbelly. Yeah. Because all, now they have their own fucking media outlet because all the, all the lit bums get on Software Underbelly and get money from Mark. Yeah. Yeah, he's and that smart. shit that shit must be out of control now. He's smart for that, bro. Yeah, when I saw Rogan interviewed him, I'm like, interviewing bums is a lane that <laughs> I did not know was gonna have so much. I did it in uh, <laughs> DC. I did a political debate with these bums. I gave them like twenty dollars a piece. Really? It was funny. <laughs> it was funny. I need to do more of that shit. You know what you should do is like bring back bum fights. Just you fight fight bums. Um, I, I, I or you get bums to fight each I other. I tried. Yeah, they shot it down. Really? Yeah, my YouTube agency. <sighs> yeah, I feel like using because I wanted to. I wanted to like put homeless people, or I wanted to put like bums and Mr. Beast type challenges. See, yeah, and he was like, no, he was like, we can't do that. See, I love it. I think it's a because brilliant. I was like, bro, let's get like three bums. Give them five Popeye's biscuits, and whoever eats all the biscuits without water wins a hundred bucks. Brilliant. And then I was like, I want to take a bum to a car wash and wash them in the car wash <laughs> with like the pressure washer and the brush. I just think that should be so funny. But then I take them, to, I clean them up there, get them a haircut. But the the point was taking them through the car wash, and I want to take them to Balenciaga and just dress them out. The fact that you can't do this is a sign of wokeness gone amok. Yeah. That's insane. Because this is like, really, like, what could be better than this? Right. And it's so it's so chill compared to bum fights. Yeah, I'm not going to make them fight. Yeah. What was that, Ebo's World? 
E bombs e world. world. Yes. Yeah, yeah. E bombs world. Yeah, was remember it? Tub Girl? What's that? It was like a picture of a Japanese woman with her ass like hoisted up in the air, and she was spraying like liquid diarrhea up in the air, and it was splattering back down on her face. But like her vagina's blurred out. There's like a like my man Justin Wang made a video about it. Yeah, and now people actually think that it might have been like an artistic thing, like not intended as pornography just because of the way it was shot or something like that. But <laughs> this, this video, th this photo just like changed my life when I was a kid. Like the most mind blowing thing ever. Like you got That's Chinese crazy. women blasting diarrhea in the air. And They've always, like they, a they, 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 they are fascinated with poop. Asians. Yeah. Yeah. Are they? I don't know. Are they yeah. fascinated you know, you by it? You never had Asian chick? <sighs> yeah, but not who is into poop. They talk to them about it. Mm. And it, it depends on what generation they are. I mean, I'm not saying that like Asian women are necessarily like suited to be sex robots, but the fact that a lot of them don't grow hair. <laughs> it's this just like, it, it's hard not to objectify <laughs> you when you're like literally just never growing hair. That, like all these other women are fighting to like shave their legs every crazy. day, dude. You're crazy. It's fucked up. <laughs> Are you at the point where you can just let your woman just grow her leg hair out? Uh, nah, I'm probably with this. You don't think you could ever get there? You? I'd be pretty upset. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't mind. I don't, I don't mind a little hair down there on the uh, vagina, though. No, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, a little landing strip or something like. Expecting that. a bald vagina at all times—that's crazy. Yeah, it's gonna be prickly or something. That's a lot. <laughs> all right, you got a flight to catch in like four hours, so yeah. <laughs> less. Because of you. L.A. traffic, though. L.A. traffic. That's it's gonna, a fact. It's going to take us an hour to get there. But I just love going to LAX and just... Burbank's better. Burbank's better. I went to Umami Burger when I was at LAX the other day. Mm -hmm. Fucking disgusting. Like, worst fast food experience of my life. Mm. Who and do you fly with? Whoever. whoever really? Are you not that person that sticks with... I don't know. I yeah. stick with Delta. Really? Yeah. I got the lounge and shit. But this I feel time. like if you want to get the best price, you should just like when I used to buy my own flights, I would get the one. I would just go for like the cheapest one. You fly coach or first class? First class mostly. Yeah, I'm I, I try not to. Like I, I love not doing it, but it feels like I usually just end up. Yeah, doing I don't. It. Uh, I don't go for. Yeah, I try to stick to Delta, but because I was like because you're like, like a points guy. You yeah, saving yeah. up for a tote bag or something? I'm diamond. I'm diamond. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was. We were trying to get me and my team's flight, and. Um, I'm like, why is everything on Delta so the fuck out? And they're like, oh, it's fucking South by Southwest. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's like right now? Yeah. Damn. And I live downtown, so that shit is probably about to be hectic. But we leave right I can't up. believe I didn't know. We leave Oh, right but up. it's probably like not the music section yet, right? Yeah. I don't know. Rolling Loud is this weekend. Yeah, my boy. Uh, I ain't gonna shout nobody out. Well, I gotta go be in public and like communicate with people for four days straight. You know what's crazy, bro? And I'm gonna see Kanye. Oh yeah, yes. Well, you know what's crazy? Like all the famous people that follow me, like people were under like videos tagging them. Like you support this guy? <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> but now I got Adams follow. He probably unfollowed me after the podcast. I feel like. Did you unfollow me? Let me see. Why would I this, this whole podcast might be erased. I followed you so that I could like ask you to do the interview and you'd be like, oh, he just followed me. He must really fuck with me. Uh, my audience, a lot of black people, but I don't think they're really the types who are going to be getting offended by your edgy George Floyd jokes on average. Absolutely not. I think that they're the types who would probably watch your shit and think it was funny. Bro, a lot of these These are my assumptions. You yeah. You got a lot of followers, dog. Losers. Oh, you posted the hair. Why don't see? That's what I don't Fucking like. Losers. That's what, what I don't like about. Uh, Just kidding. Methods. That's what I don't like about. Um, hair transplant. No, no, no. Instagram. Because I haven't seen any of these posts, but we follow each other. Really? It's selective. And don't forget to go uh, watch the special. Meanwhile, if I look at Instagram right now, I'm going to see like a bunch of kids on scooters breaking their legs and shit. Uh, go but they're not going to show me the people I actually follow. Go watch the special. Uncancelable. Yeah. Get on that. It's out. It's on YouTube. I think we got like a quarter of a million views in less than a week. Mm. Not bad. We're going up. Yeah. Probably get a, a nice bump from you. What's That's it? what I'm saying. And and let them know that you came there from here. Came where? In the comments. Oh, yeah. No. Nah, Come inside him. Don't be like that 22 world type shit. 
Do that, yeah. Twenty two no, world. Like no that. jumper. <laughs> no jumper. No jumper world. We, we get like a thousand no jumper comments right now. Basketball emoji, world emoji. Ah. Uh, how do you come up with the name No Jumper? Whoosh. Oh, you have no jumper. None. <laughs> you can tell from that. Yeah, yeah. What you did that, I see you broke your wrist like a gay nigga. Yeah. Hey, honey. It's <laughs> Look not <at> good. <laughs> <laughs> I need to like Look up a YouTube video about how to shoot the basketball because we have the fucking pop shot machine out there. Let's go. I'll go beat you. Want to want to want to run it for two hundred? I don't want to run it for anything. I just want you to go beat me because I want to see. Yeah. Uh, I'm terrible. I have no pride. Then in we gotta get a though. picture. When does this air? I got the pool table out there too. I'm good at pool. Order me some Postmates. I'll beat you in pool right quick. You're better than Rogan. No. He's nice as fuck. Yeah. I watched one of those YouTube videos the other day. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? But I, I, he also has more time to play than me. He seems like he, uh, at some point, but whatever went Rogan, absolutely nuts with getting good at pool. Whatever Rogan does is going to be one million percent. Yeah. That's the thing. He obsesses over stuff. Because people always mention poker to him, and he says, like, I'm never going to try it because I know that if I get into it, I'm going to get way too into it. And I really relate to that because I got into poker and then I got way too into it. Yeah, it yeah. Really kinda I try like, to I try to not do anything new. I have mm-hmm. enough vices. Yeah, like if you got into a sport, you could just guarantee it's going to be robbing you of like <laughs> a f- at least like four or five hours of attention per week. Only thing I watch is college football in Alabama. Mm. Yeah, and they think it's hilarious when I watch that because mm. I'm yelling, flipping tables over. But they don't get it? A little bit. They be getting it. <laughs> but they think it's so funny because uh, Matt said something the other day. What he say? Like, you need to watch something with the same emotion you watch Alabama football with? Yeah, something like that. I can't remember what it was. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I've just realized recently that the Where should college we go eat? football should we go eat right now? that important. We go eat somewhere? Uh, I have meal prep, and I got to do an interview right after this. Who are you doing? Uh, it's a group podcast with me and my buds. It's called the No Jumper Show. We do it every Tuesday live at four p.m. <laughs> was this live? No, I just got an influx of followers. I was wondering, like, what the fuck going on? Did y'all really? tag me? Yeah. Maybe Flacco shouted you out. Yeah, probably. I was like, what? The? <laughs> I got my phone and then seen like two hundred new people. I'm like, what? yeah, the special, yeah, That's special, good. special's doing. Yeah, it's doing great. Hell yeah, yeah. That's what's up. I was uh, hesitant to put it out. Really? Somebody asked me. Uh, Joe Gore asked me about that. He's like, why'd you shout out Schultz and uh, Star Wars? I said, well, if it weren't for Star Wars, probably wouldn't have put the thing out. Really? Oh, yeah, bro. They, they were mad with me because I was like, we're not releasing this. Why not? Because by the time I saw the first edit, I was already doing those jokes better. Mm. I mean, like, you know, probably in like eight years or five years, I might bring those jokes back out again after people had probably forgot about the first special. Oh, really? But, uh, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. They're way better now. So you're kind of intimidated now, though, because you feel like you're starting from scratch in a way? It's fun. Yeah. Liberated. Yeah, it's fun. I can say that. It's fun. That's what's up. How much time do you go out of your way to sit and write in a week? Every day? Every day. For how long? Mm, It's uh, more so just coming up. I try to just to keep my brain going. Like, bro, I got so much shit, and that's just one page. Like I just try to come up with a, a couple of ideas That's every like day. It's an insane amount of writing. Yeah, I just try to come up with a couple of ideas every day. Mm. Uh, because they've noticed that I get bored with material very fast. So I always need to be like saying something new. That's just me. That's the ADD in me. Interesting. Yeah. You do most of it on the phone, though? Uh, I got a few notebooks in my backpack. Mm. So like once it makes the cut, then I write it down on the backpack. I mean, write it down on the notebook. For sure. You know, write it on your backpack with like a whiteout pen. That'd be gay. When I was 12, my backpack said corn and a whiteout pen on it. Hilarious. And maybe like Metallica. <laughs> Papa Roach. I actually thought they were gay. Like I knew they were gay even when I was Hilarious. a young kid. And then my, my girl's uncle still will talk to me about how many Papa Roach concerts he's been to. <laughs> and every time I'm like... Just I, I don't let them know how gay I think that is, but That's I, just, funny. I sort of just nod and agree. Yeah, man. You well, know. Thank you for having me, big dog. Appreciate you. David Lucas, everybody go check out his special on YouTube. Uncancelable. David Lucas, and we named, uncancelable. We named it that before the whole Floyd stuff happened. It's not like we were playing. Mm. Yeah, we had this name. We had the name before we shot it, right? Yeah, yeah, because Danny Brown made the song. Mm. We had the name before we shot it, and we shot it in September. There we go. Yeah. How much you have to pay Danny Brown for that? 
Nah. Really? Yeah, he's just a real person. Like, how much you had to pay me for this? That's what people are going to say. You know, offer the strength. <laughs> <laughs> we negotiate afterwards <laughs> based on how good you think you were. I <laughs> uh, appreciate you, man. David yeah. Lucas, No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, Instagram, etc. Like, comment, and subscribe. Nojumper.com if you want to support. Puh!